Hello there, everybody. Welcome to Movies Are Real for the month of December 2021. I am coming to you from the future of January 2022. Ooh. COVID is really bad right now. Ooh. Morbius is not coming out next month. What? <laughs> Uh, hello there, everybody. I'm George. I'm here at Carrie. Laos. Hello. Uh, Ryan Lance. That's me. <laughs> More like 2022, am I right? As in 2020 as well. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> oh, I see. 2022. 2022. You know, Exclamation mark. You know, because the world's weird again. <laughs> ah, I like that. That was good, Ryan. I know where Thank you're going you. from that, but um, um, <laughs> we have a whole bunch of movies to talk to you uh, about this uh, this month, I guess, folks. Um, we'll see how much we have to say about them, and we'll try to get through it because uh. There's a lot. It takes a lot of mind power, and your folks were. We're just, we just we got some mind juice in there, but not a lot. We are watching, as it's become tradition somehow, uh, to watch a film while we record the podcast. We are watching Wes Craven's Scream, 1996. Yeah, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. What she's up to now? Yeah, who's got a talk show? I know. Oh. I've <laughs> seen clips. It looks not good. <laughs> um. What was I going to say? Oh, I recently followed the Twitter. You probably know about this Twitter account. The Twitter account that tweets out a, a movie merchandise. Uh, and there, there is apparently a Jiffy Pop brand scream at one point, Ooh. which is a pretty good bit, I think. I like that a lot. Because that's the thing I remember the most out of this intro <laughs> for some reason, yeah. Anyways, we got a lot to talk about, folks. A lot of movies, a lot of movies. So let's just get right into it. We got uh, The Power of the Dog, baby, on Netflix, directed by Jane Champion. I don't know. Oh, Campion. Campion. Mm-hmm. Campion, yeah. Uh, starring Benedict Cumberbatch, Jesse Plemons, and Kirsten Dunst. Um, this is a, a Western film, kind of. Yeah. Sort of. Not ha. really. Like farmers, ranchers, you know? Uh, it's got it's got a cowboy vibe. Benedict Cumberbatch is a cowboy, so he's all like talking like this or something. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I'd like one New York slice of pizza, please. <laughs> I'm not gay. Don't ever say that again. <laughs> Why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, this movie, um, we've, uh, just... This movie has gotten a lot of, like, um, Oscar-y buzz. Yeah, it seems like it's gonna be... I have, I have not seen this. You two have. Okay, so Jesse Plemons and Benedict Cumberbatch are brothers. Jesse Plemons is a nice guy. This might be the most normal movie I have seen Jesse Plemons <laughs> in, as his role, I think in a so. long time. Jesse Plemons, uh, so they were given, like, this land by their family, mm-hmm. and so they're, they're in charge of it. Jesse Plemons is sort of, uh, he's, like, the business type guy who, like, does business stuff. I don't fucking know. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. And Benedict Cam- Cumberbatch is this dirty, dirty, old-style fucking rancher. He's uh, hanging out in the mud, just rolling around in it. I don't understand. He, like, <laughs> likes to hang out in mud. I don't know. <laughs> Um, one faithful day, they go out to get food after a hard day's work. They go to Kirsten Dunst's uh, little restaurant thing, uh, and Kirsten Dunst has a, a son who's like, uh, I think going to school to be a doctor yeah. or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, he's also, he's got like an art, he likes, he likes, he likes to do like paper crafts and stuff like that. And so, uh, I don't know, the Benedict Cumberbatch was like, what are you, gay son? You're making these flowers? <laughs> Uh, and like, look at this guy, he's so gay, everybody. And then, uh, all right, you're selling me on it. You're selling me on it. Kirsten Dunst is really sad, but and then Jesse Plemons is like, you know what? I'm sorry they called your son gay, <laughs> and then they fall in love. <laughs> and then then it comes, like, is that, God damn it, is that how they met in real life, dude? Or? That's the whole I think that's why Carrie's laughing because that's the whole thing. <laughs> Oh my God. Literally there's, was... also, there's also elements of Benedict Cumberbatch uh, ge- being confronted about how stinky he is. Also that, yes. That's my favorite part of the movie, the five minute long conversation. <laughs> and he gets really pissed. Where Jesse Flemons is like, I want you to come to dinner, but you gotta wash up because you stink. And Benedict Cumberbatch is like, oh, I stink. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and then he walks in as his parents are leaving. And he's like, sorry, I didn't come to dinner. Apparently I stink. <laughs> Okay, like I am I am one hundred percent watching this movie now. This sounds it's, amazing. It's not that interesting. It's, it's, it's funny to talk about while you're watching it. It's not summarizing that it is more funnier than it <laughs> is. Oh, uh, there's a guy. Oh my god! Oh my god! What's his fucking name? I mean, I referenced it uh, like a week ago to Carrie. She had no oh, idea. Yeah, Bronco it. Steve. Yeah, oh, something. What the fuck is his name? Uh, I can't remember it. Anyways. Uh, 
anyways, there's not much to say about this movie. So, uh, fucking Benedict Cumberbatch, maybe, uh, maybe or maybe isn't gay himself. Who knows? Anyways, all that to say, this is a very um, uh, slow paced film. A lot of uh, very character driven. There's not like a thing. There's not like a plot device or something. Just that's sort like, of like building tension. Building tension. Because okay. Kristen Dunst is super miserable living in yes, the house with very, Benedict Cumberbatch. Very different from her because she, she, she she's not miserable. Right. Well, because she doesn't like him. And what? but he's re- she's really happy with Jesse Plemons, yes. but he has to leave on is, business yes. a lot. So, so it'll be just with, you know. him and her, and uh, it'll just be Benedict Cumberbatch and her in the house, and she just kind of starts to go a little loopy because he keeps calling things gay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. like, what's with this? You're refusing gay to, old refusing to wear gloves shit. and being stinky. Oh, <laughs> he's not. You know what? <laughs> when you put it down, he's not the best guy to hang around. Anyways, um, yeah, this movie. Is, <laughs> Fun fact: that line was improvised because Benedict <laughs> Cumberbatch refused to take a shower on set. Oh, I stink. <laughs> so yeah, this movie it's about building tension with these characters. Like something's going to happen. You don't know what it is. And uh, I think the biggest thing I can say about this movie is that. Uh, uh, the score is fantastic. I think the score is doing a l- for me personally. I think the score is doing a shit ton of heavy lifting for this movie, like elevating every everything into something interesting to me. <laughs> I think Benedict Cumberbatch does a great job. I think everybody does a fine job. Jesse Plemons is Jesse Plemons. I don't know, uh, but the soundtrack's fantastic. Carrie, you mentioned is the composer for uh, Phantom Thread, mm-hmm. um, Johnny Greenwood. So that's interesting. But yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if you have anything to say, Carrie, other than that. Not really. Yeah, <laughs> it's fine. I don't think uh, it didn't. I know a lot of people feel really strong about it. I, I put it high on my list of best movies just because I respect how well it's made. It, like, it's a well-made movie. It's well-scored. Mm-hmm. It's fine. I don't know. I don't feel strongly about it. Um, but yeah, that's the power of the dog. Um, the next movie on the list uh, is a movie that Ryan and I were going to watch, but then we saw Dragon Ball Evolution, so we cannot record <laughs> yes. on it. We were about to go, and then we're like, you know, what if we watched Dragon Ball Evolution instead? It's on Amazon Prime. We did. We did. That's an interesting movie. And this movie is Benedetta, Paul Verhoeven's Ooh. return, I think, to a movie, the director. It's been a long time since I've seen it. Feels like it's been the a name I feel like Paul the Verhoeven. way people reacted. Right. Everyone it felt like was like, oh, it's shit. a comeback. Yeah. Um, Kara, you saw Benedetta. I did. I went by myself. And um, I, had a, I made a nice evening of it. A bunch of normal nurses being very cool and normal, totally not horny, normal not violent. Nuns <laughs> preaching the good word, praising. What are you nuns? Gay? <laughs> is that what it is? <laughs> that would be apropos. Oh, okay. If okay. Benedict Cumberbatch <laughs> wandered into this nunnery and was like, what is this fruity nonsense? <laughs> But yeah, basically this movie is about this young girl, Benedetta, who is going into this, uh, what's the word for it? I said nunnery, but that's not the... Uh, nun and I don't know the name is either. <laughs> N- nun place, and uh, where nuns are. A con- and, uh, convent. 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 Yes. Oh, good job. I uh, went to Catholic school. Yeah, I was going to say, I was like, come on, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I may have went to Catholic school, but I also blocked out a lot of those memories. You know, Fair. because of trauma. <laughs> Oh, please. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but uh, she wants to go to this convent when she's a little girl, and uh, she can perform miracles, and uh, they bring her into this convent, and it's just her growing up, having a one-way discussion with God all the time, and then being like, I don't think that's true. And then she's like, but here's another miracle I did. And it sort of plays around with, is she really doing it does she have divine intervention is she just fucking with these people and then the the convent brings in this other girl who's this uh like farmer's daughter i think and she's being abused by her father and uh benedetta is like bring her into the convent and then they have a bit of a bit of a spicy spicy romance mm. and it's just fun it's very very ridiculous Okay. Non exploitation. How would you how would you compare, okay. how would you compare this to another religious movie that came out this year, Saint Maud? Uh not the same at all. Not the same at all. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> this is like they're both about the way that this main female character interprets her connection with God, the, the Lord. Li- yeah, but sure. they both do but, it in I assume vastly different ways. They both feel super close to God, I would say. One of them and takes one, it a little too one far. One of them one of them 
is a little more subdued and the other one is like i'm in charge <laughs> here's a miracle there's just i don't want to there's so many ridiculous scenes that i could summarize for you and to to illustrate how crazy this movie is but i would just rather you see them yourself okay. if you if you're so i'm inclined. still interested you know so, i've seen dragon ball evolution that was really the only thing staying in my yeah, way yeah, yeah well there you go so but, yeah i would check this movie out because it's okay. just because when i watched it I was like, that was very crazy, but then I had, hadn't heard anyone else talking about it, and then my friend started live texting me while he was watching, and he was like, what the fuck? Holy fucking shit, like every three minutes, and I was like, alright, alright, this is a fun okay. movie. Yeah, I, I want to watch it, though, it seems like some nonsense. It's um, very nonsense and very fun. But yeah, it's definitely, yeah, it seems good. Is, it seems, is it a little, um, you mentioned it's spicy, is it, and Paul Verhoeven is sometimes known for maybe going, uh, really relishing in the spiciness, is it? Yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay, cool. then, yeah, <laughs> There's the shout out to some sound design choices in some of those <laughs> okay, scenes. Okay, gotcha. Well, that's Benedetta, folks. I mean, the poster, I didn't even notice the first, the first poster was like cropped and then it's on letterbox. Oh, that's just her titty that's out. A titty. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a know. very important titty. <laughs> Interesting. Let, yeah. me just, let me just look up something else on my phone real quick. Uh. Anyways, that's Paul Verhoeven's Benedetta. Uh, I've been thinking about watching Starship Troopers and um, <gasps> Robocop again. Oh, my God. And I haven't yet. I love Robocop. Your yeah, Robocop's good. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I saw the movie way too young, I remember. Mm. As for some reason, I, I think I... This, it seemed where, like, somebody does coke on somebody's tits in that movie, right? Whoa. I think so. And I think for some reason that... There's definitely coke. There's a shit ton of coke in that movie. Oh, wow. And that's you what guys, I remember as a kid. I was like, I don't know if I should be watching this. Hold on. You guys are right about this Benedetta poster. Yeah. What? That's oh, not... That, that, yeah. there's, there's a nip version. Yeah, the letterbox a... version has the nip on oh, it. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> BRB, everyone. <laughs> Uh, anyways, that's a, I'm here to report this for the people. That was really stupid. Why did they do that? <laughs> anyways, <laughs> uh, Spider-Man, No Way Home. Uh, Spider-Man, they made, it, they made it the big one. We talked about it last time that Ryan and I are not big fans of the, uh, the, the newest Spider-Man, uh, I don't know what you call it, run, uh, fucking... The Cinematic Universe version. Yeah, Marvel Cinematic Universe version of Spider-Man. Yeah. Um, but this was a big thing. Like it was rumored that hey, they're gonna do all this and bring it all in. Uh, we watched it. I've seen it three times. I've only Yikes. seen it twice. Uh, I never want to see it again. That's fair. <laughs> that's totally fair. I'm here to report that it is a solid, fine movie. It is. It's very solid. I think it's very, very fun of a movie. Yes. Um, I've seen it three times and I'm not bored. I think the middle is definitely. Uh, but yeah. Uh, like I, I want to get to the end when there when you know the thing happens when stuff happens when stuff happens. Uh, do, do you care about spoiling? Yeah, things do like, we care? I don't think I care. I don't think I care. It's been long enough, right? Yeah. It's. Like, I feel like everyone who's wanted to see this movie has the, seen it, and also like people knew going in, yeah. like they're going to show up, right? The people who would get mad about being spoiled are not have listening seen to this. <laughs> yes, and also, yeah. not also not listening to us. What? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think. I, once you know that Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire are going to show up, it's like, can we just get to the, to the thing? <laughs> um, and yeah, I think it's fine. Um, I guess, does anyone want to say something uh, specific to it? I was, was going to just talk about William Defoe, but if it's not worth that. <laughs> what I will say is I have been a defender of the Maiden Spider-Man series. Yeah. I, I will say, like, the movies, like, as themselves are not, they don't do much. There's... But- elements there's are... there's really cool like moments in those movies that i really like but i just feel like andrew garfield's performance is just he's like a good spider-man he's a very good spider-man and i've had this argument with people like no andrew garfield sucks but like he's I've... the best actor of the three spider 100 by a lot yes and a wh- lot <laughs> and when watching when i've talked to people about oh, this yeah. movie um <laughs> They're all like, Ryan, you were right. right. Andrew Garfield's yeah, amazing. Say, this is you being like, oh, man. <laughs> it's like, oh, man, I feel... It's, yeah, like, it's so I've been funny because right I feel like those movies are having a renaissance now because everyone yeah. watches this movie and they're like, wow, he's so good. Well, these movies are pretty good. Yeah. You, you've been there the whole time, I've Ryan. been there the whole time. How does that make you feel? Because I've always thought they were stupid. <laughs> no, they are. They are stupid. <laughs> but they have really cool moments and he shows like... He shows that he's like a real actor. I think Andrew you know? Garfield and Emma Stone carry those movies on their 100%. back. 100%. They're doing as best as they can. Those two want to fuck so bad. <laughs> yes. It's ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> and that, and that was nothing else why those movies work. And then I just, it's just very, it's very good to me how, you know, people have, you know, respected that. But I just feel, you know, especially watching the movie the second time is like, 
the moment Andrew Garfield shows up, he is just like acting circles around yeah. everyone. He just like commands all he these. He just tension. feels like Spider Man. Yeah, I, I know. He just <laughs> like he's having fun. He like has sad moments. He's a good actor who's he's really good Spider-Man. Yeah. Spider-Man. And like, right. I like Tobey Maguire. He's a fine actor. Like, oh, he's but... like, Tobey Maguire's lost on set. <laughs> 100%. <laughs> yeah, Tobey Maguire's just kind like, of a goonish good. meme. Yeah, and I love that about him. That's his <laughs> so movies, that works. His and... movies are very, like, campy and fun. And yeah. he, he, he kind of, like, went back into that very well. And, and I don't really know what Tom Holland is yet. Tom Holland's just, like, a... a like, his Spider-Man's like, I'm a kid being Spider-Man. Isn't this crazy? Whoa, I'm Spider-Man. And I, that's the thing I hate the most out of his Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah I don't get much from him. At a certain point, yeah. like, just, you're Spider-Man. Act like Spider-Man. Yeah. I need you to act, act like Spider-Man. Like and, people and, love that he doesn't act like Spider-Man, so whatever. <laughs> I love that Spider-Man doesn't act anything like the He's character like, Whoa, who's I'm the single most popular comic book character of all <laughs> whatever. time. You whatever. To him. I like I like how the this movie ended with, like, them putting him in a position where he could, they could develop do, uh, more into that. Yeah, because like he's yes, I love. They gave him the classic suit. They gave him the classic suit. He doesn't have any more stupid, stupid <laughs> gadgets. He went through five fucking suits in this movie, and I get it. It's just to sell toys. Yeah, sure. But like, it's annoying Looks when cool one of the poster. Su- yeah, it's annoying when one of the suits is just another suit turned inside out. Yeah, <laughs> because like oh, I didn't even toys. realize that until like oh, that's what that is. Yeah, honestly, it took me the second watch to fully comprehend that that's what was going on. Yeah, it's <sighs> but yeah. But oh. yeah, Andrew Garfield, great. And then I think like what you guys really want to talk about is Willem, Willem Dafoe. Dafoe. Willem yeah. Dafoe committed to this bit 100% and God bless him. God bless him. <laughs> he is man. just 100%. I can't believe, I cannot believe people genuinely think the Green Goblin in this first Spider-Man sucks. I don't understand. See, People are crazy. I feel similarly vindicated as you, Ryan, because yes. I've been saying Willem Dafoe is hot for years. <laughs> yes, I and know. Now everyone's like, look at you, Willem Dafoe when he was young. Isn't he so cute? And I'm like, yes, he's cute now. Hello. <laughs> Can you see him do that like crazy smile? <laughs> like Tom Holland just like, punch him in the face and he's just not breaking a smile. <laughs> He's great. He's so good in this movie. <laughs> yeah, he's fantastic. I think uh, it was clear that he's the, been the best Spider-Man villain they've done. Like, it feels like the most, like... It's crazy how, like, the first Spider-Man villain, yeah. the first actor who yeah. played a Spider-Man villain is still the best one. I think it's, like, for some people, I, I feel that... I, it's weird because I feel old because I feel like I assume how some older folks felt when they kept making Batman movies after the first Batman movie. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it's John Nicholson and Michael Keaton. Yeah. Like that, that's it, and it's for me. It's like yeah, it's it's fucking Tobey Maguire and fucking William Dafoe. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he's fantastic. Uh, Alfred Molina also great in also this. Also great. Yeah. Um. Everything else. Jamie is Fox good. plays a different character. He, he <laughs> plays mostly just Jamie Fox. He mostly just plays himself, but <laughs> not the weird character he did in Amazing but, Spider-Man yeah. Two. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever. Who cares? <laughs> who cares? Um. I do not think they actually hired the guy. The guy who played uh, Sandman and Lizard. Oh no, no it's them. Come back. It's those them. Are, those are one hundred percent. It's well, them though. It is them, but, but it's just the VO. Just, just, just the VO, yes. But they showed up like towards the end for like the scenes, but they were not. I think what they said was like because they they've aged a lot, and they're like, do we really want to do all the CGI work to get Sandman and the Lizard? Like, <laughs> yeah, no, one hundred percent. Is that is William Dafoe? They do some. They're doing some de aging on yeah. him as well. Um, well, he also just has always looked. He also looked. He also looks good. But, yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't want to say I had fun with it. I watched it three times during my holiday break. Uh, nice. I don't love it. I think it's fun. I think it's fun. <laughs> it is uh, fun. I like Zendaya in it a lot. I think Zendaya. Correct me if I'm wrong, but Zendaya doesn't do a whole lot in that first one, right? No, in the okay. first one, she's basically kind of like, like woo, she's Mary like, Jane. She's uh, protesting at that yeah. place wearing yeah. her Sylvia Plath t-shirt. Yes, but <laughs> well, yes. she's got a different sh- like, like I got a I got something to say shirt. Yeah, in all of them. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, the Sylvia Plath shirt was I, m- very memorable. Um, but yeah, it's it, I like it. Fine, I think it's it does its it did the job it needed to do. I will say to give them credit, the most credit I can give them is there is a lot of elements cooking in this stew, and the fact that they got it to taste well and taste like it's it works. Yes. is impressive. It is very impressive that they got all this nonsense in here, and it all does not feel like Spider Man three times. Five with all the shit they had. Oh in yes, because I remember whenever there's a Spider-Man movie, they announce 
Because, like, the big thing with Spider-Man 3 is, like, there's too many villains in this yeah, movie. Exactly. And that was the same thing with the main Spider-Man 2. Like, they need to stop putting so many villains in these Spider-Man movies. But, like, they have all the villains from all the works. past movies. <laughs> and they made it work. So that's a Good silly, job, silly argument. But, yeah, I think it's definitely... In terms of, like, you know, like, Avengers Endgame had, like, you know, those, like, big, like, cheer crowd moments. I, I like those yes, kind I of like, Yes, I like seeing people's reaction. Too. Um, it, it felt more... The third time I saw it at, at Alamo, uh, it was a... I realized that Alamo $5 Tuesdays on a big movie are, like, lawlessness. Like, it's the worst oh. Alamo you could get, like, probably. <laughs> like, there's too many people to, like, enforce everything. And it's really people testing, like, how much do you want to be a cop? Uh, the people next to me brought in Amigos, but then they oh, caught them, and so, yeah. like, two staff members came in, and they asked them to get the fuck out with Whoa. their Amigos, but they came back because they really wanted to watch Spider-Man, but then there was a group in front of us in the first row who had a bunch of kids who just kept talking about Spider-Man, and they would not stop talking about Spider-Man, <laughs> and the guy next to him did not want to be a cop, so he didn't say anything. I was like, all right. I was thinking about ratting out the Amigos people, because the guy next to me had his phone out, and I was like, you know what? I've Maybe. seen this twice already. So, I've seen this twice. So I what what know. happened? When, what happened when we saw it the first time? There was the person who came in and was like, "Yeah, because it was the first day." We saw it was the first day. So for people who don't know, there are two. We are supposed to having two Alamos where we live, and so the second one just re, we went to the first day they reopened at the <laughs> first showing, which was Spider Man: A No Way Home. Not a cool boo. <laughs> not a great. <laughs> not a. I mean, you know, whatever. They're gonna do it anyways. But it's not like we were assholes. But yeah, there was some guy who felt like he wandered off the street. But this theater is like. On the fourth floor, <laughs> so he you, had, you had to take two he, escalators. Yeah, to get he came and said, "I'm going to watch the Spider Man." They tell oh, me yeah. it's sold out. This is a sold out. I want to see Spider Man. I forgot about that. That was insane. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't. He was yelling so weirdly, yeah. where I couldn't make out what he was yelling about. Yeah. He was complaining. Like, Spider Man. Spider -Man. Yeah. And our waiter was talking to us, and I was like, "Uh," and our waiter was like, "Yeah, I don't know." <laughs> It's like it's. He's like it's literally my first day. I don't care. I don't want to do this. I, was, I I didn't remember that, but I was gonna say that it was similar to when me and Greg witnessed someone being thrown out of Joker, and we didn't care because it was like the fourth time we uh -huh. were watching that movie. He was just really drunk in the literal first row. Of that the is movie. that energy. Anyways, all right. Next movie I've given shit because George is a known hater of musicals. But uh, as I've seen people review it and talk about it, it seems like I probably should have watched that movie in the movie theater. And that movie is Steven Spielberg's West Side Story. Um, is this the first? Uh, well, how many versions of the of the play in a movie format have there been? Um, I only there's know the big one. one. Is it? Is it like? Is it I like think the there's the big one. And I think there's been like smaller ones. But this is the next every, big every one. Every other year. Okay. Yeah. Every other every few years. Yeah. Probably. But okay. this movie tanked. It did not that, do well. It did not do well. And I've heard from everyone says like, oh, this is you're this is not Ready Player One Steven Spielberg. Mm -hmm. This is ready this is Steven Spielberg here to fucking direct the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what I've heard. Which is which is a shame. Yeah. I mean, it came out when it came out, right? It and, did come out when it came out. And uh I don't know. But Carrie, you're the one who saw this yep. and you, yeah, my mom. you are a musical lover, but you yeah. are an Azel L. Gordon. I fucking Dis hate also, that's the so second thing I've seen of, of the people have been like, man, this Every movie looks beautiful, and then he's there. <laughs> Everyone who I've talked to is like, this movie's amazing. Ansel Elgort fucking sucks. <laughs> like, like it's not even like I don't like him, so I'm projecting that. He's just not good. <laughs> is it like just, his acting or like his singing or feels, like all of it? He I don't know. It's all. It might be because I don't like him. He just always seems to have this air of like, yeah, well, I'm here, and, I'm and he just doesn't doesn't sing very well either. I just mm. don't think he was very good. Uh, and I'm not super familiar with West Side Story. This was my first time. Mm -hmm. You said your it. mom used to play like she in played in the pit orchestra because they would play it at the Omaha Community Playhouse, and she played. So she was very excited, very excited for yeah. it. And. Uh, I didn't realize that it is literally just, uh, I should have, but uh, it's just Romeo and Juliet. Oh, yeah, I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like. And I was like, I was a part through and I was like, this is. They're a Puerto Rican? Rican? Mm -hmm. right? There's yeah. uh, Puerto Ricans and then like Greasers, basically. Okay, yeah. So it's just these two groups who are both the outcasts mm -hmm. of this part of yeah. Manhattan. Like, you can't go out with them. You can't go out with yeah. them. Yeah. But. I thought this movie was really good, and the set pieces were amazing, all the big dance numbers were very, very good, 
And I thought all of the cast besides Ansel Elgort was amazing. And yeah, I would just recommend this movie if you can get past. Yeah, that's the Ansel thing. Elgort. Is like, am I still gonna like? Oh, the only musical I really love is Singing in the Rain. I fucking love Singing that's a in great the Rain. Movie. It's a great movie, and that's my bar to measure everything. I didn't like In the Heights at all, really. This uh, this feels. From that statement, I would say if you like more classic musicals yeah. like Singing in the Rain, this feels With, much like, more boom, like, like much more like a Singing in the Rain okay. than like a Greatest Showman or okay. a fucking yeah, exactly. <laughs> Greatest Show. <laughs> so it feels a lot more about moving the story forward with the music rather than being like wash up, ba bam, yeah, exactly. yeah, go I, pow. Yeah. Yeah. Which I also love, but... <laughs> it's not my jam. It's, I think you might enjoy this okay. one a bit more. But also, I want to tell a fun anecdote. Because I always I always come out of seeing a movie with my mom with a fun anecdote. <laughs> where uh, We went to see this movie uh, on the day where it was that super bad windstorm. And yes. everyone was losing their shit. Yes. So we were in the theater while that was happening. Oh. And there's a big fight like they're leading up to this big fight yes. and there's a moment where two characters collide and you hear like a stab noise and you're like oh someone's been stabbed and then the lights go out and the movie <laughs> just stops like right <laughs> after that like the, the the power went out in the theater and i was like holy shit <laughs> and i started dying laughing and i was like this spielberg guy <laughs> that's a crazy ending <laughs> but it was just so fucking because it was me and my mom in the back row and then there was like this row of people from like an old folks home i think they're like well what and then one of them was like well i know what happened so it doesn't matter <laughs> and, then, and then one of the other ones was like well i don't and then it, was so, it was so fucking funny how long was this it, was, it wasn't bad at all it came back on like five minutes later but then <laughs> like another 20 minutes or so goes by and then the sound gets knocked off so the movie's still going, but there's no sound. Oh, and we're like, oh. That's important. Man, this Steven Spielberg makes some bold decisions with his yeah. musical. Best editing West Side Story. But it was that was just so fucking funny to me. Just such a perfect climactic moment. And boom. So like, was, so. by, by the time you got out, was it like the past? Because it was like a good 40 minutes where it was really bad. Um, It was, I don't, it was like, it hadn't gotten bad, bad yet. It hadn't started raining or anything oh. yet. It was just like, I don't know how the power even went out. It must have just gotten hmm. knocked or something by a tree or some shit. It but was something completely unrelated. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what happened. But it was, it, we didn't miss anything important when the sound was gone. And they rewound the movie like oh, a okay. minute and a half that works. before the power went out. So it was <laughs> but I just had to share because that was the funniest that, that thing. That is really <laughs> Anyways, that's West Side Story. I will probably watch it. Um, it seems like a like a mo movie ass movie, and uh, you like this shit on Steven Spielberg for like putting his name on stuff, just being like. But it seems like he really tried on this one end. And it yeah. was also cool because there's a lot of uh, people speaking Spanish, and mm -hmm. there were no subtitles at all. Oh, okay. And I was watching it, and I was like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> I could follow what's going on pretty well, but I did not catch a lot of it, and I was like, that's a cool decision. I enjoy that you did that. Okay. Well, that's that. Uh, Nightmare Alley, folks. Guillermo del Toro, he's back. I, real quick, I had no idea old Guillermo had something for us this year until that I saw it like in no, a trailer like in November. And I was like, ah, great. And then I never saw it. Mm. Carrie, you saw it. Ryan, did you see it? You saw I it. Yeah, you got pulled it. over. Yes, yes I got pulled it. over on the way back. <laughs> right. Yes, <laughs> outside of my apartment. That's fucking Even nice. though it takes 20 minutes to drive to that theater, yes. <laughs> Nightmare Alley, a remake of a classic film. I can't remember. I don't know what year. I don't know. It's about based 40s. on a very old book. Oh, it's based on an yeah. old book. Bradley Cooper, baby. Uh, uh, Willem Dafoe. Uh, fucking Ron Perlman. Mm -hmm. uh, Rooney Mara. Rooney, everybody. All the Tony stars Collette, are in Nightmare Alley, baby. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, Ryan, what do you have to say about Nightmare Alley? I think it's fine. Uh. <laughs> like, it feels... It, like, it feels very game with a tour where it feels it really feels like a classic -y, like an old an old film not in like a bad way it just feels just the structure of Cinema. it so you're saying that does it feel like we're still in he's in his still in a shape of water zone ish it it feels different from shape of water okay. it feels like an older game okay. movie um and i think it's yeah. because it's something that he's wanted to make for a while but now that he has the ability to probably make any movie that he wants. I hope so. I, I assume this is something he wanted to revisit, but it feels like a very, like, 
old style. It feels like an old novel, and I feel like he did a great job like articulating that. But I think my main thing with this is that I just don't like Bradley Cooper's oh, performance that's very fair. much. But like the most, the main thing is like Bradley Cooper's like this drifter, and he joins this circus, um, and he kind of like. He's a schemer, you know? He kind of schemes his way into things. Yeah, he he makes himself out to be a little more dumb than he yeah. is. And so he, like, weasels his way through this place, and he sort of uh, gets close to Tony Collette. And she is the fortune teller, and she teaches him the ways of... I forget the word she used for it, but the... Just the basically the... The bullshit being a psychic Yeah, stuff. exactly. Yeah. The, the way that you ask an audience does this mean anything to anyone? Like she has a whole strategy sure, okay. book of how to, to, yeah. to, to swindle people out of money by making them believe that you're psychic. Yes. That's how like he starts. Then he like goes into, uh, goes down the rabbit hole with like more elaborate, you know, things. And then he goes off on his own to become a traveling psychic man. A mega prankster. Mega, mega, <laughs> mega, mega goofer. That's this guy. Yeah. And he gets, he just takes bigger and bigger psychic jobs. Yes. And then it gets a oh, bit too intense. Yes. Okay. Um, so that, that's how that goes. And it feels very like, it doesn't, it, like, it feels like it just kind of like goes, you know, it doesn't have like a, it doesn't feel like a, like a three point structure just kind of like, yeah, continues on, which is why it feels like an, like you're reading like an old book. Cause it's mm-hmm. like, I wrote this book until I decided to stop writing it. <laughs> yeah. Like it feels like that. And it does feel like a series from like a detective or something. Yeah. Like not that he's a detective, but it would be like, here is a character that we follow through several books. And yes. so it's like Bradley Cooper and the new circus, Bradley Cooper and oh, leaving okay. the circus. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it feels like that. And I like I like the visuals. I like the idea, and I like the idea of where it ends. It felt kind of like obvious, like yeah. straight up from the beginning. The ending was a little PSA ish. It was yeah. a little weird, but <laughs> and then and then my main thing is like I just don't like Bradley Cooper in the role, really. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mind him. I have no feelings about Bradley Cooper. I don't. Me, me neither. I don't like him, but I don't. Dislike he's him? not an Ansel Elgort, I okay. should say. Yeah. Like, I don't watch him and get angry. He's yeah. just like, I'm just like, that's Bradley Cooper. Yeah. Coping it up. <laughs> but you liked it more than me. What, I did. You... I liked it a lot. I, I love anything circusy. That's yeah. just a, a trope that I always really like. And I loved the imagery. Which and is I why love, you like The Greatest Showman. I love The Greatest Showman. <laughs> <laughs> that movie sucks so bad. Yeah. But, uh... Uh, I love, I like all the performances. I think Kate Blanchett is great in this movie. And yeah. I like, I like how it's just got an air of everyone pulling out their, like, I'm going to be a classic actor in this, yeah. like, olden movie of Kate Blanchett, like, smoking a cigarette and being uh, like, welcome to my office. And Bradley uh, Cooper's <laughs> like, hey, Dame. It's like, <laughs> I love this. This is great. And I think that Rick, Richard Jenkins is yes, really good in this is. movie, oh, too. I love is. him. You might know him as the old guy from Shape of Water. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's, I love he's a him. fantastic actor. Yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch would not like him. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I derailed your train of thought, Gary. That'd be a very funny edit of like him going to like the, the pie uh, <laughs> shop and instead of the other guy, it's Benedict Cumberbatch as the stinky uh, cowboy. <laughs> oh, that's really good. No, but yeah, but I like this movie a lot and it's just... I don't think I don't know if it I was really excited for it and I don't know if it lived up to how excited I was for it. Same. I think it's the Guillermo del Toro like it, like he it comes with a lot of like expectation mm-hmm. but at the same time he's just it's he's just the guy who does what he wants to do and not right. everything's going to be like the big thing in the world he just kind of yeah. I I feel like his stuff is very like which is hard I he guess. He has those big his those big movies like yes. Shape of Water and Pan's Labyrinth then he has his more like yeah, that's Gamero. He's having fun. And that's that's how this movie feels. And Which that's is... how, like, Crimson Peak feels to me. Where it's like... Love Crimson like, Peak. He, he, oh, he, like, he went into this movie with, like, a visual idea and he, like, nailed it. Mm-hmm. But some of the story stuff just... Which must be hard when you're... Me. When you're one of those... When you're trying to be one of those... There's, like, none... There's not many of those directors. Like, this is a director movie. Like, yes. like uh, Christopher Nolan, you can do whatever the fuck you want. And it's hard, I think, when you're... Guillermo del Toro, like... Not everything's going to be the big thing. 
but when you're when you're trying to be Guillermo del Toro, like there's expectations from the studio and expectations from the audience. Mm-hmm. But like awe is gonna be big. Sometimes it's just like it's just kind of manageable thing. I don't know. Like, but yeah, uh, that's yeah. I mean, I believe he was working on this at this because he's making a Pinocchio movie with Netflix. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah that sounds <laughs> great. Um, Why? The, I feel like there's been like three Pinocchio yeah, dude, there's movies has in been, the last yes. few years. What the fuck when, is going when on? I heard, it's, like, it's like in the public domain, who right? Who gives so. a shit about Pinocchio? There's that does. weird '90s yes. one. That one's fucked up. Um, yeah, there was that newer one that like showed up. Yeah, I feel like one just came yeah. out. Yeah, but I I remember reading that Gamma made a deal with Netflix and he was gonna make a Pinocchio movie. Or them, I can I can look more into that. I would love to see a like weird ass. Oh yeah, a hundred percent terrifying. I don't know if you've seen this the nineties New Line Cinema Pinocchio, but that thing terrified me. And I would like that. I would like something that's like, uh, what's the fucking word for when it's Uncanny Valley? Mm-hmm. Look at that would Pinocchio. Be cool. That's yeah. what I want to see. I mean, oh yeah, this is a twenty twenty two movie, and yes. it's going to star. Oh my God, you and McGregor, <gasps> Ron Has Perl, Geppetta? Ron Perlman. Oh, you didn't have to tell me Ron Perlman. Tilda gonna be Swinton, in. <gasps> Christoph Waltz. Dude, stop! <laughs> I'm gonna die. Kate Blanchett. Oh. <laughs> All right, who's holy? You and McGregor is the talking cricket. I haven't seen. Oh, he's Pinocchio Jimmy Cricket uh-huh. in a while. Um, Ron Perlman is Mangaf. Who? No clue. No clue. <laughs> no clue. Tell us when is fairy the turquoise ter- fairy with turquoise hair. Christoph Waltz is the fox and the cat. Ah, uh, of course, Christ- Christoph Waltz. <laughs> I I don't remember a single is there a thing. Geppetto? Is there a Geppetto? Geppetto is uh, David David Bradley. This this very old man. <laughs> I've seen is. I've seen this man. Before. Anyways, moving on. Hell There's yeah. Nightmare Alley. I will watch it eventually. It didn't do well, but I don't think there is any way that movie's gonna do yeah, great. That, yeah. Um. I think I think. And also, I don't know if Disney cares, and I don't know if this it was riding a lot on Guillermo's. Maybe name. in a different year. Maybe in a different year, but anyways. maybe in a different world. Uh, anyways, that's Nightmare Alley. Uh, there it is. Um. Um. All right. So, so far we've talked about The Power of the Dog, Benedetta, Spider-Man No Way Home, West Side Story, Nightmare Alley. We still got a shit ton of stuff to talk about, folks. Um, next movie on the list is a new Disney animated pictures joint. Or is it... No, it's, it's, it's definitely Disney animated... I was going to say Pixar, but no, it's Disney no. animated pictures. Uh, Encanto. Am I the only one who saw Encanto? I did not watch. I did not watch it. Okay, so I'm the only one who saw Encanto. Okay. Uh, speaking of movies that did not do well over the holiday season, turns out every movie that was not Spider-Man Whoa, did what? poorly. <laughs> um, they they moved this to Disney Plus, right? Very fast. They yes. moved it like there were. I don't think there was any plans at all, hmm. but it did not do well. And to be fair. They also didn't market this at all. I, I didn't see shit. I did not see a lot of marketing. There was nothing. And, and part of it, they have so many... Nightmare Alley is a Disney movie. Spider-Man is a Disney movie. This is a Disney movie. Like, when you have all the movies, at a certain point, you only have so much attention to give to each yeah. movie? I don't know. Hmm. Uh, so that's a, that's a weird thing. Maybe one company owning all the movie studios <laughs> is a bad thing, folks. What? I can't say anything. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, anyways, so yes, Encanto came out. It is an animated uh, motion picture uh, about uh, following this Colombian family who's got superpowers. Um, it is. I don't know much about Colombian history. There is some of it in there, but it's vague enough that it... Might be might be made up history. Essentially, we follow this uh, this family who their grandmother was essentially kicked off out of their land in Colombia by colonists. I they're so vague with the details that you really have to do so. I try to do a quick search, like okay, like what's the historical context for this? And mm-hmm. I couldn't find anything. There might be. Anyways, in this movie, while she was getting gunned down by the colonists, uh, there was the a magic. Oh, what was it? Was it a magic? I don't know what it was, but this magic, uh, after her husband gets shot, uh, gives her superpowers and builds a giant wall? Okay. (laughs) A giant mountain? Yeah. Separating them <laughs> from the colonists, yeah. And then the thing she <laughs> makes a great big wall. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To separate. I, I guess I sep- didn't. I didn't think about this until. Yeah, they make a giant wall to separate them. Anyway, so for it really turns hurt. into a magical house, and the house gives their family each each descendant of the family powers, and then they build make a little community, and the family with their each power starts to serve the community. Like someone like I have super strength. I got ba ba da ba da. 
Except one girl doesn't get superpowers, and she's all like, man. And then she learns stuff about her family, they learn a lesson, and then stuff happens, whatever. This movie is the most, the most like, I Hallmark card, I feel really bad saying this, the most Hallmark card, we're doing one for diversity, and we're gonna tell mm. this culture, but in the most Disney corporate where it doesn't hit as hard as something like Coco, or Ho Coco, I guess you could call it manipulative, but it goes for your heart, and it works every time I see it. It's And this doesn't do that, but it also doesn't do anything so exceptional. It does something that I can be like, you did something unique there, um, and it just, when it ends, I, you just leave like, it just leaves you with kind of feeling neutral, I think. There's not, the, the fucking like narrative like thread thing is nothing. It's like family. It's like, okay. All right. I've seen a Disney movie before. I, I Exactly. It's 100% that. It's, yeah. Um, I can say like they, they did a good job of, um, because it is Columbia, like not, like there are folks like who are maybe darker skinned or maybe lighter skinned and they do it in like they're like there's a there's a mixing of like heritage there and they do a great job of representing that in the characters and the way they're designed. The the most positive thing I can say about this is that this movie looks incredible. I don't know I don't remember Rhea looking this good. I don't remember Luca looking this good. This movie looks fucking insane. It looks amazing. That, that's the best thing I can say about this movie. It looks Beautiful. I think everybody who did the research and the character art and all that stuff, good job. All the songs for me were forgettable. Uh, they were written by Lin Manuel. And the more I'm learning about Lin Manuel is that maybe he should stick to directing stuff because Tick Tick Boom sounds fine from what I hear. It's pretty yeah. Good. But he also didn't write any of the music. It was all, really, yeah. yeah. He was just behind the camera <laughs> and like, cool, that's great. And this, it just, it's got that rhythm to it where it's trying to be. Every song feels like it's trying to be a thing that you will be obsessed with mm. or your child mm. will be obsessed with. And none of it nails for me. The only song that nails for me is the one that's sung by like uh, an actual like Latin American artist and it's all in Spanish and it's like a little anthem by Colombia and it's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's fantastic. It's my favorite thing about the movie. But everything else just eh. And that's all I gotta say about it. It's eh. It, it, did, it did look from like I, I think I saw like two trailers for this. Um, and when I saw it, I was like, this feels like Disney's is treats this as like their B team for some reason. For some reason. What, what sucks because I like, don't know why. Like they're doing more like diverse Raya was great. Diverse Raya fucking like, ruled. Exploring different cultures um with their films. And that's I like that. I like I I like the idea of seeing that. But this felt like they just didn't it just felt like they didn't super it's care. The story's and the fact not that there. it came out and then like I felt no like nobody cared. Nothing, no one cares. Like wow, it really feels like they were there are just, like, this under the rug. Five writers weird. on this movie, and oh. I, it feels like a movie made by committee. Again, a lot of people put hard work into it, I'm sure, but it just feels like a Hallmark card to me. And uh, I don't know that one song I mentioned that's called uh, uh, "Columbia Mean Canto" is pretty good. That's all I gotta say. Anyways, that's Encanto, Carrie. I believe you are the only one who saw The King's Man. <laughs> we talked about this last time on the podcast, how it feels like Kingsman has been forever ago, and mm -hmm. we don't think about those movies uh, often, but when we think about them, like, yeah, those were some good movies. Um, how do how <clears> you <throat> say about The King's Man? I liked it a surprising amount. Okay. Like, I liked it more than I expected to, but I don't know... I don't know if that will be a shared experience. Okay. Because <laughs> it's... It's a prequel. And it's got Ralph it's, Fiennes. Yes. Uh, is his name Ralph or is it Rafe? Because when I, I was it's watching... It might be Rafe like, When Fiennes. I was watching the Harry Potter reunion, they everyone was Rafe. like, Rafe Fiennes. And I was like, oh, I, oh I'm dumb. Hey, oh. Ralph, what's up, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Ralph Fiennes? <laughs> what's up, my dude? Uh. <laughs> so, Rafe? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard though because everyone always calls him Ray Fines, so it's like it's how Ray. so there's an F in the middle yeah. there but I don't know if it's at the end of his <laughs> name or the, whatever uh, we're fine <laughs> Ray, <laughs> Raymond <laughs> uh, he plays this Duke guy it's uh, he's it's all uh, it's 
encompassing the events of World War One. So it's around that time. And uh, he is an ally to the king or something. He's he's like a Rafe Rafe finds is this rich rich guy whose wife is killed when he goes to do like some sort of I don't want to say mission work, but he's going to some like war camp for some reason and then violence breaks out and his wife ends up dying and so his Damn. motivation is and he has his son with him there too and his motivation is he wants to try and help with this conflict but also try and keep his he's being overprotective of his son so that's his angle and uh there's also uh building tension with russia and all the i don't know enough about world war one to mm-hmm. use the correct term uh, but uh so i don't know it's a it's, cartoon version of rasputin yes <laughs> <laughs> it's basically this movie is basically just well this is what actually happened in world war one uh, it was actually the king's uh, yeah, men who doing like, stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. so and i thought that was fun and i've seen a lot of people calling this movie boring because it, it if you didn't tell me that this was related to, to those other Kingsman. movies, like it doesn't have that ah, same like energy like in your face. It doesn't have that going. same constant funny, funny, yeah. weird, weird. Hmm. It's more, it's more grandpa y. It's like a grandpa Kingsman movie, and I kind of liked that. Okay. And it was a lot more emotional than I thought it was gonna be. It takes some emotional twists that I was like, oh, oh, fuck, and I really liked it. And a lot the. It also can be probably seen as one of those movies where there's a few scenes that are really, really, really good. And so you kind of excuse the rest of it, kind of maybe not being the best or being a little muddling and boring. But I liked it all the way through. But I've seen people saying that because the Rasputin sequence is fantastic. And there's a big action set piece at the end, which is really, really, really good. But... But those are the most like oh this is the Kingsman movie remember yeah uh, yeah okay. Matthew Vaughn is good at having those big like he always has like that one big very cool sequence mm-hmm. um, and then you know you look back and you're like was that all really that good though yeah I don't know that's I want to feel about Kingsman yeah. in general I want to watch this again because I was just surprised it was very dour and sad for a lot of it and i was like i didn't know i didn't know i didn't expect this today so it took me off guard in that way and i kind of liked it so it hit you more because you weren't expecting yeah i liked it more for that and i thought that rafe rafe finds was really (laughs) good (laughs) he because a lot of the characters don't have much to do like his son's kind of boring and his uh his uh people who work with him when they first start the kingsman they don't they're, you could tell that they're interesting, but they aren't given much to do in the movie. But as a as a that guy vehicle, it's does this good. feel like that's it? This is it for this franchise? No, absolutely oh. not. They, they there's a they big, said there's, that they're gonna make a third one. There's listen, I'm just gonna say at the very end of this movie because he assembles the team, and uh, I just want you guys to know that Stanley Tucci is a member of that team. So was he not in the other ones? Was he? Mm-mm, I don't think so. Oh. Stanley Tucci was in the time. other ones. Been a lo- what, what, what? I don't remember. I haven't seen the He. Movie. I thought he died. I'm thinking about it as Mark Strong. Maybe because yeah, he was Mark I'm Strong. Oh, Mark maybe. Strong. Yeah, 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 Mark, Mark Strong, Strong is Merlin. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember yeah. that. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> also, as I mentioned, this is another Disney movie. <laughs> another Disney release of the holidays. So, uh, <laughs> it also did not do but well. Yeah, but so I'm, I'm excited at the, at the concept of another Kingsman movie with if they <laughs> featuring them. Stanley Tucci. <laughs> if they make it, we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I would, I'm going to go see it. And I still am curious well, to rewatch. I'm curious to rewatch the first two because I genuinely have no idea how those will play. It might as well be a whole other life ago. <laughs> yeah. I was, I, I really often though, I don't like Golden Circle very much. I feel yeah. like I might like it more now for some reason, but I, a lot rewatch the scene of Merlin singing Country Roads before he sacrifices himself. That scene is fantastic. Okay. Well, that's the King's Man, baby. Um, boy, howdy. We're 50 minutes and we've talked about a shit ton of movies, but we still got more, folks. Oh my God. Don't look up. Ah, I did. <laughs> into, this, into this solar eclipse. Oh. <laughs> Remember when Trump did that? That was hilarious. I'm not going to watch this movie uh, just out of just... just I considered putting it on in the background while I was writing these show notes, but then I was like, I'm just going to listen to music. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, totally fair. Um, I watched this because I was just... 
Because it was one of those things where it's like, people either like, like, this sucks, or like, wow, what an introspective look at our society. Yeah. And I just wanted to know, like, where I stand. Because <laughs> I have a feeling I know where Ryan's going to stand. Because, <laughs> because, as we know, my opinions are the correct ones that people should have. Of course. Yes. Uh, this movie sucks ass. <laughs> What? Um, so the the plot is, and I'll articulate why I think it sucks ass. Thank you. Um, you know, <laughs> a, as I always do with my, with my personal reviews. Um, but it's about Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence. They Leo is a uh, astronomy professor, and Jennifer Lawrence is a uh, student. Um, and she notices a comet um, that no one's ever seen before. It's up. And she's like, wow, that's crazy. And then they look at the calculations, and then they're like, well, that that can't be right. And then they do the math, and it's like, that is going to hit Earth in six months. <laughs> um, and then the bit is they, like, you know, tell it to the press, and they go as far as to tell it to the president, who is a Trump parallel played by Meryl Streep, which Whoa. sounds very fun. And uh, Jonah Hill plays a... Advisor or something? He plays the Don Jr. Um, oh. son, son of the president who has a major role in politics. And they they tell the news like, to the president, it's like, hey, the earth is going to end. Like, 99.99% it's going to end. And like, all right, well... <laughs> okay like very the, topical. like they just don't like they just don't really care and then they're like let's just go on you know news and tell the world and then they go on the news and go on this whole media tour to like explain to people like hey the earth is gonna end we need to do something about this and everyone's like eh, we'll deal with the media in our own way um and then like it goes on to like you know there's an an apple parallel because they're like i think we can harvest the planet and think of all the wonderful jobs it can uh the comet can create for us if we harvest the minerals from it and then the president's like oh i'll do that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like the and you know it's it's a commentary on climate change mm -hmm. obviously but it doesn't offer anything other than wow we should listen to scientists right like this movie should, should remain 2010 maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah like it doesn't it doesn't tell you anything other than like we should do more research into this how about you like give me more than just that you know it's also like not super funny and, and like there's a lot of points where it's like you should be laughing at this mm. um i laughed one time at the very end and the movie is two and a half hours oh. Um, and it was, like, almost basically a post-credit thing <laughs> because um, Meryl Streep, like, the the plant's about to explode and Meryl Streep, like, leaves to go in a submarine to go into mm -hmm. space mm -hmm. to abandon the planet. Yeah. Um, and she's on the phone with Leo and Leo's like, and she's like, you know, you can come with us to outer space. And he's like, no, you and your son have a good time. And she's like, oh, fuck. And then, like, it cuts to, <laughs> it cuts to Jonah Hill in, like, the launch station. He's like... My mom's coming back. She's definitely coming back. <laughs> that was very funny. But Jonah Hill's character, like, is pretty insufferable. And, like, he's supposed to be because yeah, he's right. Don Jr. But, like, he's not funny. He's just like, man, this guy's just, like, annoying. <laughs> but he's supposed to be, like, funny annoying, but he's not. Because he's just... Uh, I don't know. Um, oh, and Timothy Chalamet plays a character, oh, yeah. like, towards the very end who is completely useless to this movie. I don't know why. So Ariana Grande and Sharon are in it for some fucking Yeah, reason. Ariana Grande plays herself, basically. And so is it Sharon. Um, she sings a song about the comet, and right. it's like, all the proceeds go to the comet fund. Uh, <laughs> She's like Asian this time. Something like that. Yeah. It's, there, there's, there's, a, there's, there's a lot of parallels to real world that are very explicit. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it just doesn't, <laughs> it does like it's it's saying that it's saying something but it's not really saying anything um so it just feels very very hollow and lifeless and just kind of boring mm. in the end and like i wish i could be like one of those people who's like wow what a <laughs> to be fair i don't know how you make a movie how do you wind up saying anything doing these kinds of movies oh no i don't know either but like it they it's decided to do it. So. It's trying to, and all the marketing around this movie is like, well, "This is climate change." Uh, am I right? And it's like, but but what about it? What about like we bad. know it bad? Like we know, and like there's this whole like it's called "Don't Look Up" because there's this whole movie like, guys, the, don't, don't look, worry, don't yeah. don't look up. Like the comet's no big deal, and it's like, 
I get, I get all of what you're doing, but it's just not working at all. And I just want Adam McKay and Will Ferrell to make up and they can make their stupid nonsense comedy movies. I would kill. I like the big short. So, hey. I, I have not been able to finish the big okay. short. I don't know why. I, love I haven't started it. <laughs> I love success. So keep making success. Okay. Um, I, I would, I would, I would kill for another Anchorman movie right now. I would kill for it. <laughs> I don't, I, we're too, I don't, I don't think we're that smooth brain anymore. I don't think audiences are that smooth brain anymore. I don't know. Speak for yourself. <laughs> I love it, but I don't think like, there's enough people. I think people think it's like, oh, this is like a throwback old thing. And mm-hmm. Yeah, but those Nobody same cared pe- about the campaign. Those Ryan. same people are watching Don't Look Up at Me like, wow, this is an intellectual That's what they want to do, though. <laughs> I know, but like, I, I want like a good old school because when Will Ferrell Jackass d- Forever coming to the end. no 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 yes. not that because like when Will Ferrell does like his current comedies with like Kevin Hart or whatever it's like I don't get care. hard yeah no. yeah it's like mm. I don't care but like when he does with Adam McKay it's like okay the, the minds are melting together in like a good way where like this is just the right amount of stupid for what and this do you know is. you can get Step Brothers on 4K <laughs> oh, that's <very> funny. <laughs> yes. That's really good. I, I gotta be honest, uh, I've never seen Step Brothers, but uh, Greg was like, Carrie, you just gotta watch the ending scene. It's really funny. And I watched it and I was like, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't even know what scene he could possibly be the first They're to. singing at the wedding. <laughs> Oh, the I don't wedding. remember this at all. Man. I was okay. like, oh yeah. I remember this scene. And I, I was remember. like, I was like, yeah, that was fine. And he was like, oh, it was fine. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I think, what that was the part of the, I think she, I think he mentioned like the Adam Scott like part, the Catalina wine mixer thing. Or something. Oh yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Oh, was the Catalina wine mixer? Okay, yeah. okay, I right. couldn't remember what they. I didn't see the movie. I just saw them it's singing been a long at an event. Time since I've seen it, but I did also think it was one of the best movies of all time when I saw <laughs> it. I think that's probably like the weakest of like. The films he did with John C. Riley and mm. Will Ferrell, but it's still it's still fine. It's still funny. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, we also watched Blades of Glory that evening, and oh, I was like, "No, nah, that's, that's a good movie." I actually like that. Movie. <laughs> that movie has a uh, is it John it, Hader. It does have John Hader. Napoleon yeah. Dynamite. Mm-hmm. That movie and it has, culturally relevant forever as it is it's, uh, quoted in, in Paris, uh, a great song. Um, I remember Ryan when that song was very popular. You were like, "Why is this fucking song use fucking Blades of Glory?" Are you familiar with In Paris with Kanye West and Jay Z? Not really. All right, that's fine. <laughs> I'm sorry, but it sounds like something I would say. <laughs> who is? Is it Elizabeth? Who is the? It was. Oh my god! Who was the bad? Because uh, fucking Amy Poehler and Will Arnett. Amy yes. Poehler and Will Arnett, <laughs> and a, uh, their third sister, who they hate and makes Aunt, feel bad, is yeah. Pam from The yeah, Office. From the yeah. office yes. <laughs> yes. Anyways. Funny movie. Funny <laughs> turns <up>. out. <laughs> I feel like people don't like that one out of all those, but I liked it. I, I liked it. I still liked it <laughs> for some reason. Anyways, don't look up, folks. Um, oh more boy. like don't watch this. Anyways, boy, what are you doing? <laughs> um, The Matrix. <laughs> Y'all heard of this movie? All right, so George, get, you really, you really like The Matrix now. Ah, yes. So I, I, my letterbox review of The Matrix Resurrection. So this year has been, um, at the end of the, like when we do our, our uh, best of, we always have our characters like, here are the favorite movies like that we've discovered for the first time that we really like. I think it's clear that for me, it's The Matrix. I saw The Matrix for the first time. And I saw other people on my Twitter having the same thing where like The Matrix is like, such it was a thing that like in pop culture everywhere, like, whoa. <laughs> the whole you could event. not escape the Matrix. Yeah. Um. In those years, it's, I had never seen it until like later on in life, but like I felt like I had seen yes. it because it was just dominating. So everywhere. everybody had. I feel like there was a lot of people. Brian was not one of those people. Who oh, was I hate like, the Matrix. Who was <laughs> like, I didn't know that was the Matrix and that fucking ruled. And so I seen the first Matrix three times this year. I love that movie. It is one of the best movies Hollywood has ever made. It is incredible. It's fantastic. It's the best comic book manga adaptation of a comic book manga that does not exist. It's phenomenal. Um, And so I've been obsessed with it, and I've been so excited for this, but I did not see two or three. Uh, And I saw two or three after this movie. But after watching Resurrections, I'm here to report to you that was exactly what I personally wanted out of The Matrix. Um, But I think we should step back and, like, actually talk about The Matrix Resurrections. So, um... We've been spoiling movies. So, The Matrix Resurrections, it is Matrix 4, but not really Matrix 4. It is, um, no, it is Matrix 4. 
Um, but it is a, a sort of med. It's, it's playing with like, what does it mean to make a Matrix 4 in the year of our Lord 2021? <laughs> like, what does that mean? Uh, everybody's fucking done the Matrix. Like, the Matrix, like, every movie is the Matrix. Like, a little bit has, the Matrix is in a little bit of everything. Like, it's, it's impossible to do the fucking Avengers have like fucking massive fucking alien battles wherever the hell it's impossible to impress people. What the fuck are we going to do? So instead, like, um, this is a sequel. Like it, I feel like when you do these kinds of like, we're going back, you have like the ghostbusters thing where it's like, we're trying to do something for uh, a new generation. Yeah. While also acknowledging the old stuff. It, it makes the old thing seem like sadder than it really was. 100%. And it's it's like weird. It's like you're dusting something 100%. off. 100%. <laughs> uh, and and uh, maybe it feels like... Um, it's just hard. Like It just feels it, like it, old. It, it feels like... It, it feels like... This movie that like you have definitely watched like a thousand times. You always saw it the one time 30 years ago. And that's all. Mm -hmm. It was like... No, you only got to see it once. It's crazy, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes, like, it feels like... It sometimes feels like the people involved with it are putting on a smile and having a good time because, yeah, we're doing it for the fans or whatever. Like, you know what? I do like the fans. They're annoying, but they care about this thing, and I love it. This is Lana Wachowski 100% saying to you, the audience, I fucking love The Matrix as much as you love The Matrix. I love Neo and Trinity as much as I, as you love them, and guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna give this not a new generation, we're gonna do Matrix 4, but everybody lives happily ever after. And that's what we're gonna do, we're gonna call back the old stuff that you know and love, we're gonna do it again, and it's gonna be great. And I fucking loved it. Because the Matrix 4 is like, well, if people have not seen the last Matrix, I mean, Neo and Trinity die in the end of that movie. Uh, and this movie is like, what if they didn't die, actually? <laughs> what if the robots took them and their love was so powerful that we could make a new Matrix with their love and their not knowing in a your name sort of fashion, <laughs> them not knowing that something is missing in their lives makes the Matrix that much more powerful because they're miserable. Because turns out when people, when humans get mad, they create more energy for the robots, you know? It's great. It's kind of like social media. You know what I'm saying? When you hate click something, you know? And, and you just get more, you know what I'm saying? Anyways, um, I'm all over the place. I'm rambling. I, I'm trying to get my head straight on this. I like this movie a lot. I think it is, Um, I think if, if you don't love The Matrix like I do, I think you'll either think it's fine or you'll fucking hate it beyond belief. <laughs> I think Carrie, I think you think it was like fine. I thought it was fine. I feel like there are parts of it, like there are characters I'm like, they're so fucking annoying, but I'm like, they're probably supposed to be annoying. Like they're probably commenting on something from the matrix, but I don't know the matrix well enough to see what angle the movie's going Who for. Who specifically? The, like the Keanu's friend, the, the guy who worked with him every time he talked. Oh yeah. I was like, is this supposed to be like the they audience? They chattified or something? um Agent Smith. They no, not him, not him. Oh. The well Mr. he was Anderson. I didn't like I didn't like him very much either, but uh the the one dude who oh, was like the, the, oh, fucking yes. MILF yeah, dude. That and I was guy. like, what the that fuck? That guy was fascinating. <laughs> I was like, I don't know what this is supposed to be. And also I thought Neil Patrick Harris was annoying, but I was like, is he supposed to be annoying? <laughs> He's also supposed to be a chattification version. Of like every all the bad guys. That, sorry, Carrie. Actually, I'm gonna let you finish. Well, I, I just I uh I feel like I would get more out of this movie if I was more familiar with the source material, maybe, maybe, or if I cared about it a little more. Like if it was more meaningful to me. Like I love the angle of uh Lana Wachowski just loving these characters so much and being like because I I saw this anecdote or I heard someone relay it how yeah. about her parents died so her parents died yeah and uh, she was it was just like really like these people are just gone yeah like, they're gone and yeah and that really fucked her up and I, again hey and so like the movie being born from that place I really respect that yeah and I like she's that like, angle they're a gone whole lot but man I love working with Keanu and Carrie Ann and I love Neo and Trinity. Mm -hmm. What if we just made another Matrix yeah. movie? Yeah, <laughs> and so from that angle of it being like a, a warm movie about love, true love prevailing, I'm like, that's that's interesting. 
interesting. It's and great. I like that. It's yeah. great. What? Spoilers, Ryan. You know, like it's not the <laughs> Keanu is not the one. The one is not one person. Ah. The way you break the matrix is love. Interesting. That's why, <laughs> because Chin is like, you're going to fall in love with the one. I was like, it's you. You're both the one. It's love. And then they fly <laughs> out and it's great. Um, Yeah, I think, um, I forgot what I was going to say. I have a lot of thoughts. I'm, I'm scatterbrained in this movie. I like it a lot. Uh, I, you were I, saying something about the villains. So you're saying yeah, the they villains. very much, it sucks. It sucks that they got new uh, actors. It doesn't suck, but like the Merovingian. I don't know. Okay, so Neil Patrick Harris is very Neil Patrick harris mm-hmm. but they're trying to make a very modern, annoying architect of the Matrix. I don't know what's the scene that Greg showed you, Carrie, because you mentioned, oh, was it the part it with the- It was the part with a, a, the, a zillion- uh, The architect. Oh, the ar- I've seen that scene before. Yeah. Oh, that really one. Funny. And then oh, they have okay. a big fight. That. Okay, and I, I was like- Oh, I loved it. I I I, I was just. It. I think I just have a disconnect. Like I like the mate, the first one, but I've only seen it like once or twice, so I don't. It's not something that I reference a lot or think about a lot. But I was. I just have like. When I was watching that scene specifically, I was just like, "But they're like in a computer. Why are they punching each other?" And Greg's like, "It's the Matrix, Carrie." Yeah, that's. And so I think I. You just, keep saying it's I, the Matrix, but what I does think, that mean? I think I just missed the point of a lot of Matrix. Yeah, that that, that thing is like it, that, that last boss fight is a little bit weird and meta because what they did in the other sequel, and they realized maybe that didn't work out. Anyways. But I thought he showed you the part with the TV screens where you Mm-mm. they showed you the old architect of the Matrix. Because oh. in this one, he's like, Neil Patrick Harris is playing like, I'm the boss oh, now. Oh, that's okay. I, so know, in, I know of that scene and I've seen it referenced in things like Scary yeah. Movie. <laughs> yeah. But, so uh, that in that movie, he's play, He's like, uh, I don't know the actor who plays Snow in Hunger Games, but it was oh, that uh, type of Donald guy. Donald Sutherland. Donald Sutherland. It was a Donald Sutherland old man type of guy. Mm-hmm. like, I know everything about the mm-hmm. Matrix. I'm wise. I'm old. I'm a Donald Sutherland Got type. It. And so now they're like, what if it's like a tech bro-y, Neil Patrick Harris-y right. guy who's all like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and I get it. It's a little bit grating. I'm just, I have my thoughts about this, so I'm just going to end it. I think it's fine. I think if you don't like the Matrix, you're going to hate it. But if you love the Matrix... This is exactly, I think, like if you love the Matrix and the two and three are good actually, and I think two is, two's got problems, but I love three, three's fantastic. Then if you love three, you will love this, yeah. and that's fine. I am still curious to go back because I still haven't seen two or three, so I'm curious. They to are go back. weird movies when you think about the the way they made it and mm-hmm. the fact they released on the same year, months apart, and it is a wild thing. Huh. Um, they're doing, it's a very ambitious thing that it feels like maybe once they found out how big the Matrix was and how much carte blanche they were given, mm-hmm. it was like they shot for the moon a lot and it felt a little bit like, oh, maybe they needed an editor <laughs> or someone to tell them that. Yeah. But they were working on this anime thing and this video game thing <laughs> and Warner Brothers is giving them all the money to fucking hang themselves with, essentially. Um, it's weird. Anyways, the Matrix Resurrections. That's that. I got nothing else to say about it. Licorice Pizza. Uh, it's a very different movie. Very different. <laughs> ah, a little bit. What? Uh, Paul Thomas Anderson, folks. Uh, Alana Haim uh, of the band uh, Haim. And uh, Cooper Hoffman. Uh, some, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman. Philip Seymour Hoffman's mm-hmm. son. Um, it is uh, California. It is the set. 60, 70s, 60, probably. 70s. I think 70s. I don't know. Yeah, 70s. <laughs> um, this is a coming of age movie? It is a romp movie? I don't know how to describe <laughs> this movie. It's 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 a little like uh, another um, Bradley Cooper movie where it's just someone just getting <laughs> just into schemes. Just doing stuff. Just doing Bradley schemes. Bradley Cooper also in this movie. Yes. He's so fucking good at this movie. He's very, he's he's very, very good. good. This is this is why You're I prefer right. Bradley Cooper. Just a crazy yeah. <laughs> weirdo. On the side, not a leading on, man. On the side, yeah. Um, yeah, con man boy. Con man boy. <laughs> uh, actor prodigy? So he claims? So he claims. Turns so he out. Claims. So he claims. Um... And Alana really likes his twenty-year-old girl, twenty-five-year-old girl, played by Alana Haim. Yeah, 
Um, whose life's a wreck. Whose life's a wreck. <laughs> yeah. Um, and yeah, they they form a friendship slash romance maybe thing, and they just go on fun. Trying to sell waterbeds. Trying to sell <laughs> yeah. waterbeds. Getting into schemes. Her trying to get control of her life. Yeah. Right. Uh, and then having moments of like, what the fuck am I doing with my life? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and him being up like, I'm fucking on to the next scheme, baby. I gotta, you know, hustle, loyalty, respect. It's hard out here for a few, baby. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Um, I like it. I like it too. <laughs> I like it. I think it's really good. I think yeah. it's really good. Um, it's just shot well. The, I don't the acting is fantastic. They have great rapport. Um, it's very funny. It's very funny. It is very funny, yeah. It's got some wild shit in it. Like the, the fucking, the whole, there's no gas and we're fucking smashing the Ferrari <laughs> of Bradley Cooper. That and whole sequence is fantastic. Is amazing. It's so good. That whole scene is great. Um, I, I think my whole thing is like, it feels like the movie is just like going Kind but of like, rambling. Just yeah, and like it's a movie about nothing, but it's in it's engaging. The it whole is engaging, way. but just like once it gets to the end, I just feel the like the ending is the thing, huh? It's weird. I'm just like, okay. I mean Sure. Sure, I guess. I thought we might have commented on the elephant in the room a bit more but, than <laughs> we did, but we did not <laughs> yes. do that at all. <laughs> Like they could have done it without any music or anything, and just cut the credits, maybe yeah. without being like, "Yeah, yeah. we got here." <laughs> Whoa, okay. Yeah, um, I think I agree with you. I think um, <clears throat> this is a movie about two characters who are, are well. One of them knows what they is inflated ego knows what he is in life, uh, but really, it's all on the fucking. It's all kind of falling apart like he's laying the next track but like a fucking adam sandler and uncut gems like a howie it's like again he's in his own schemes like oh no no it's like it's gonna be fine it's gonna they, be great we'll pay go, you back it's gonna be great things don't go as badly for him no. as they do for adam sandler but that's the energy he's able to pick himself up a bit more but that's but the, he will 100 percent be full adam sandler when he's in his 40s where a lot of him is 100 percent knows like man what the fuck is my life the whole point. Yes. But they're both characters who are kind of a fucking mess. <laughs> yes. And it makes in sense. different complementary it, ways. Exactly. <laughs> and in real life, you have people who, like, maybe one of them, there's a, a big age disparity and uh, their both lives are a mess and somehow they find a, a bond in a relationship. But, uh, and th because that happens. But it is weird how you make a movie about that. But at the end, the movie is like, celebrating that we got here with a kiss yes. and like you yeah. could have just ended it i don't know you if ended it like they could have just been friends and like he's into her or they could have kissed but then like that's it yeah. i don't know it just it just <laughs> makes it's just <clears throat> it's weird because i have to reckon with it that it, we all have to reckon with it's like i really fucking like this movie about this 25 year old girl <laughs> and this fucking kid like sort of having this summer fucking adventures that lead to them having a relationship and it's weird like it's a great story but it's a thing that i have to reckon with and be like ah <laughs> like, i like it a whole fucking lot yeah uh, but I, I, I like it in the way that you liked uh what was the we, we just talked about you like i like this but like you know the matrix resurrections yeah sure <laughs> like i like it we're like this is very done well this is a good movie. Oh, the Power of the Dog? Power of the Dog, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Like, this is this is clearly, like, a lot of thought and effort and all the acting is solid, but, like, at the end, it just didn't do anything for me. It didn't, you know, explore the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. And it didn't really lead anywhere with any, like, defined, like, the character's like, oh, I learned something. Like, he's just gonna do more schemes and her life is not in as big of a mess, I And guess. the thing is, I'd probably <laughs> watch that. Yeah, <laughs> I've really watched that. Yeah. It's a movie about nothing, but it is enticing the whole way through. Like, I watched it with, like, Donna Joe, I mean, I watched it, and I was enthralled the entire fucking time. Mm -hmm. I was, like, eating up everything that the movie was giving me, and I was, like, smiling and laughing. And Donna Joe walked out, I was like, I fucking hated that. That movie <laughs> yes. was about fucking nothing. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but it was shot so well, and they said nothing well, and that Bradley Cooper, am I right? 
there was not enough of him, honestly, in my opinion, in the yeah, movie. Yeah, probably not. Um, so, Carrie, so I feel like you like this the most. What yeah, about probably. it were you just like, yeah. I don't know. I love dating kids. Carrie, please say That's that. Exactly. Right. <laughs> That's so real. <laughs> To defend myself against <laughs> your point, if anything, I'm in love. I'm the kid. <laughs> I'm in love with elderly men. <laughs> oh, that's totally fair. Totally fair. That's fair. <laughs> Should we go back to Willem Dafoe? Oh. A grandpa. <laughs> anyway, I just, I, I hate to say it this simply, but I just love the vibes of this movie. No, yeah, totally it's fair. Just like, it's a good vibe movie. Like, uh, the, the music is insane. Everyone plays off each other so well and i just each little encompassed thing that happens like the truck obviously i really like the sequence with her and the the actor at the restaurant and then when yeah and then when the other guy shows up and they have that whole i love that whole scene too and the way that these two have this friendship where they're almost at odds the whole time where they're like, fuck you, like, fuck you. But then they still genuinely care for each other. Mm-hmm. I just really enjoyed that. And I could have also done without them getting together at the end, but it didn't bother me that much. It, uh, it like, <laughs> I don't know. It's hard to it's <laughs> Again, It's the 70s. It's, it's like, fine. <laughs> I, I'm going to make... But hey. it was completely, like, it was completely innocent for 90% of yes. the movie. Yes, 100%. So it's just like, I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. That's Whatever. what I'm saying. Like, you, I'm just selfishly, you made it hard for me to reckon with. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Again, like, Paul Thomas Anderson, like, pitching, like, I'm gonna tell this story about a 25-year-old and a 15-year-old, like, hooking it up. <laughs> I, I'm And serious. I'm gonna make you like it. Because, like, I, I, I remember gotcha. seeing the, like, the online stuff of, like, of like people like walk out. That movie's disgusting. It's like, what part? Be were, real. What part were you like? I need to walk out on this. Yeah. This is like. Let's be real. Let's be th- honest with each other. As I'm trying to be honest with you, when I tell you that I like the movie with the 15 year old and 25 year old kiss. Yes. <laughs> I have problems with it, but I, I'm being truthful with you that I liked it a lot. So stop acting like. Water beds. What? <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> Um, yeah, everyone's like, water, but... Ugh. That's also my problem. Like, it's like I don't think Paul Thomas Anderson is, like, signing off on pedophilia here, folks. No. No. <laughs> he, 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 did, he did not appear. There's like, guys, I love this. And he points <laughs> to them kissing. <laughs> I'm all about this. Me, Paul Thomas Anderson. I'm married to Maya Rudolph. That seems weird, right? <laughs> Like, it's not unweird, but, like, it's a little... It just seems a little off, right? Anyways, I love these two kisses. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is it's it weird movie. that he's married to Maya Rudolph? It's weird, right? I don't know. From what angle? What do you mean? Like, Cause, like totally? She, t- totally, yes. Because he made Phantom Thread, and she's Maya Rudolph, okay? She's yeah. in Sisters. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I I went off on a totally different tangent. I'm sorry there. <laughs> That's fine. Maya Rudolph. Oh man. My, no, my... I love Maya Rudolph. She's just so manic, and I love that about her. And he just seems very like cinema. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. It's it's just it's just interesting. I don't know if there's anything else to say because I'm all over my, my head as well. But um, I I love how this is shot. Just in general, but I also like how it feels real. I love how there's characters with acne in this movie. Is that a weird? Like, yeah, it's they, nice to see that. It's like, you don't see it very often. Yeah, and it's like they're just people, and it's just like, oh, oh, we gotta mention Ryan when the boy showed up. Oh my god, we, <laughs> we lost sho- our mi- we lost our fucking minds when Jared from Booksmart showed up. To oh, <laughs> we were like, oh my god, oh, shit. <laughs> It felt very much to me like, do you remember when we would watch all the David F. Sandberg movies and we would lose our mind when Lotha showed up? Like, oh my god! <laughs> and we're, like, we're the only people yeah, we're the only two people in the theater and we're losing our absolute shit and everyone yeah, else. Yeah, I made, I made a joke to Carrie afterwards that? and I think that, that the joke was like, my letterbox view is like, you know, like, people reacted to uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield Trump and Spider-Man versus Ooh. me and Carrie... <laughs> We see an actor play a different character in a different movie. Like, Whoa! <laughs> oh my god! So yeah, he was he, so fucking he funny was in this so movie funny. too. The he scene was where so he's funny. like, the scene where he goes to dinner with her family, and he's like, 
I won't be doing that. I'm an atheist. So. <laughs> <laughs> but you're Jewish, right? Yeah, I'm wrestling more. Just not for me. Not for me. Not for me. You guys can do it. So good. So, what the hell? <laughs> He's so... Maybe that's another thing. It was like, he's so solid, but he's only like the first act. Yeah. And it's just like, man, he's so he's funny. So good. I love that actor so well. He just dominates everything. Oh my God. Anyways. I forgot about that. Oh my God. The Kush Pizza. Uh, I like it. It's good. Um, yeah. All right. Two movies left to talk about, folks. Uh, Red Rocket. Uh, Sean Baker, Simon Rex. Uh... Carrie, you're the only one who saw it here? Probably. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Is it's... it A24? Yes. Probably. It's neon? Sean Baker. So uh, it's either A24 or Neon. Uh, uh. Yeah. No, yes. Yes, it was A24. Uh, basically, it's a guy who thought he was a hotshot, left his town in Texas to go to Hollywood to be a big famous actor. Now he's a porn star. And he falls on hard times and comes back to his town and tries to oh. mooch off all the people who he left in this town. And it's very much another Uncut Gems Bradley oh. Cooper guy with his schemes. Oh, okay. <laughs> and uh, I really, really, really liked this movie. And oddly enough, I haven't heard anyone complaining about this movie. Like, I like this movie and I think oh, yeah, it people, works. There were some people who was like, hey, I saw some tweet like, don't let any of the licorice pizza freakos who hate it watch Red Rock. You know, yeah. Oh, because what's the what's the relationship like, with this one? He's like thirty five, probably. Okay. And uh, he goes to a donut shop, and there's a seventeen year old working there, and she's like, "I turn eighteen in three weeks," and he's like, "Fuck yeah!" <laughs> and so the, the main part of the movie is him being in love with this girl and trying to coerce her into being a porn star with him because oh, she sees he she he sees her as her his ticket like back into stardom uh. and i'm like and i i didn't mind it i thought it was funny because this this whole movie and as like a sean baker movie it's just about these trashy people being yep. it's like a yeah bad that, sounds guy like, that sounds like a bad person doing a bad thing bad. to a child and it's like yeah, and, yeah. And, but it, this movie is also hilarious, but I just find it weird, personally, <laughs> that no one is talking about that. I think one's got, I don't know. I but, don't... I mean, she is 18, but it's still, like, predatory and odd. Oh, <laughs> so yes, it's like, no. I think licorice, there's been a lot of licorice pizza commercials. There's been a lot. Yeah. Of, so, <laughs> I think it's, like, it, there's more licorice pizza commercials than, like, any Paul Thomas Anderson yes, commercial I've ever marketed in one of his movies. Like, I, I only heard a phantom thread through Carrie. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I marketed it by yeah. watching it nine times on Letterboxd. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell? <laughs> what is this? Dude, dresses? <laughs> but, yeah, I think this movie is hilarious, and I... I, I am obsessed with this kind of movie where it's just about white trash people and just trashy people scheming and doing shitty things. Because I just like... You like schemes. I love schemes. No, I just like the realism of it. It was just like, these yeah. aren't people who I would normally see a movie about. And I just like... And it's like, I've I've tried to make this justification to Greg when I watch, like, really shitty reality TV. Because it's just like, that's a life I will never be a part of. Yeah. Like, like these people doing drug deals. And I just like having that look into it. And I don't know. It's like, that's... a 24 frame is, like, <laughs> like a movie. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah. But, yeah, I think this movie's really good. And Simon Rex's performance is really good. I didn't know he was, like, a comedy rapper like alamo was showing some of his stuff before the movie and i was like i didn't know who this oh. man was he had like a comedy rap pseudonym that i don't remember right now but but you have you not seen tangerine did you say mm -mm, oh, I haven't yeah, seen, that's, I, that's definitely that movie i want to watch it i love <laughs> florida project florida Pro that florida project i think i said this last time yeah. that florida project probably has my favorite willem dafoe performance mm -hmm. but yeah, I would check this movie out. I think it's really good and, and very funny. I, I like Sean Baker's... I've, I've, re I've read some stuff that he said about film, and I like his approach to it, but I've not seen any of his movies yet. <laughs> and I would really like to. I'll, I'll, I think I you definitely like Florida Project. I definitely want to watch the Florida Project at some point. But yeah, he seems like a cool dude, and this seems like a thing that he would make. Last movie out of the action pack. I episode. almost saw this, but it was... <gasps> Uh, two degrees that day, Ooh. and I was like, I'll wait till it's on Apple TV. Yeah, yes. it's coming out on Apple TV soon. I think like next week. Yeah. Anyways, the tragedy of Macbeth. Also already on Apple. 
TV Plus, right? Is this? I oh, thought it. Was, I thought it was an Apple TV Plus joint because I always saw the marketing for it. I think. I think it's theaters first. And, oh, yeah, and I then, think yeah, like they're doing that Netflix thing. Yeah, uh, they, they give it. Is, they give it a theater run for like a week so that it can uh, be uh, co- oh, okay, contested this, Oscars. This is stuff. definitely Netflix. Uh, Apple's first, like we want, when we want people to take us seriously. Mm-hmm. Okay, but Carrie, tell us about this movie. This movie was very pretty. Ah, it looks very pretty. It was cool. I I know Macbeth. <laughs> I know I read it in I school. Read it in I did not. So yeah, I me too. Like, I, going in, I was like, Psh, I got this in the bag, and I was watching it, and they're like deep, deep. This just the one like, where, like the he, he gets a. Like prediction or that yes. someone's going mm-hmm. to yeah okay. he gets a he gets a I prophecy remember. from witches yes. that tell him that he's going to be the king and he's like but there's going to be something there's like some problems with yeah, that. yeah. But he's like he's that like, was the he's full, like that I, was the full thing for the witch like, you're gonna be king but there's gonna be some problems he's like all right bet I'm gonna be the king let's do this but yeah going in i was like i'll be fine and they just play it completely straight like it's just oh. straight up shakespearean oh. and i'm like oh god <laughs> so, so it's a rich text it's dude. very dense and okay. it's just it's just about these it's cool to see because a lot of times you think of uh all the British actors, they've done their time doing Shakespeare and stuff on the West End and mm-hmm. everything. But it's cool to see these actors who I wouldn't normally associate with that kind of acting, like Denzel Washington and Francis McDormand, doing Shakespearean soliloquies and monologues at each other. And I'm like, this is just interesting to watch. And uh, I am dumb, so I was getting a little lost a lot of the time. But because uh, turns out it's hard to remember. Because I have trouble, I put, I watch everything with subtitles, so I feel like if I was able to read what they were saying and get full sentences on uh, the screen, I could follow it a little better, but... Uh, some green night levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but it turns out that not having subtitles and not having a page opposite the Shakespeare mm. page telling you what the fuck Hard they're follow, saying, yeah. I'm just like, mm. yeah. <laughs> So it knocked me down a few pegs, so it's like, okay, <laughs> I don't have as big of a handle on this as I thought. But because of that, I got time to take in all the beautiful sets and the beautiful shots and the beautiful textures because it's all black and white. So it's all about the shot compositions and all the textures and everyone's clothes and the walls and the shadows and the way they play with light. And it's just really cool. And I liked it. It, it, if you're not interested in watching a, a Shakespearean play performed very straight, nothing <laughs> like no panache, like not, I don't want to say no panache, but they don't like let's innovate this and make it about not feuding Romeo gangs Plus. in New York. It's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's Macbeth. It's Macbeth. Okay. It is straight up Macbeth, but staged beautifully and shot amazingly with stellar acting. I wonder so. if that's going to do anything for the Academy. I don't know. It just it just feels like so on the nose for that. Like if you're trying to, if you're trying to pitch it to them as like, come on, guys, you gotta try a little. <laughs> bit. Yeah, but they always have like one, one or two. True. Like, all right, they asked for this, and you're just giving this to them. <laughs> um. Wow. That's uh. That, that's that's the last movie December. on the list, folks. Holy shit. Uh. We talked about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve movies on oh, this wow. podcast. Jesus Christ. I uh, got. Good use out of my Alamo season pass last month, which is good because I don't know how yeah. how much longer it's gonna be around. Yeah. I don't want to go watch Boogie Nights tomorrow, but I don't know anymore because mm. they're playing it there. Uh, last uh, last thought <laughs> that came that I did not mention there my Matrix Resurrections thing. None of the action in that movie is as good as any of the other movies, and because it did not have the team that worked on the mm. uh, like who had like that kung fu experience and you could tell it looks yeah. like a normal action yeah movie. i didn't I, I i wasn't super not, into any of the yeah. action scenes yeah it's a bummer it's a bummer that's the thing i gotta say about that anyways the 365 baby the most fucking this movie looks awful i have heard <laughs> simon I, kinberg yeah simon kinberg yep. and some ladies just a lot the all the ladies just a lot of ladies. yeah oh, lupita nyong'o is in it ladies uh, the it, rest of the people who were dead did not get hired for Ocean's Eight. Is yeah, this <laughs> movie, Cruz. This looks like nothing. Yeah, like, <laughs> like it's just like it looks expensive. At least I sure hope those women's paychecks are fucking I big. Mean, yeah, and it's just coming out in January. It's called the Three Sixty Five. Yeah, and it just appeared out of fucking thin air yeah. from Simon Kinberg. I don't remember <laughs> what movie I was going to see, but I got a trailer for this, and I was like, what the. 
fuck is this? Then it was like, coming this January. And I was like, oh yeah, it's oh, going to really? be that time. <laughs> We're getting, because, you know, you're used to seeing all the Oscar season trailers of like, here's the best movie we've ever seen. Here's the other best movie you've ever seen. It's like, wow. And, and like, then this is January. This turn. is January. It's like, oh yeah, right. You're January's, snake eyes. <laughs> yeah. January's coming back around. <laughs> but this January is weird. Very bare. Yeah. <laughs> which is weird. No Morbius, baby. No Damn. Morbius was moved back again. And again. I was telling you guys this. Morbius has had seven different release dates. The movie has been done for two years. And it's still being pushed back, which is so funny to me. I am so excited to watch the movie Morbius. Yeah, I'll see this. Um, it looks stupid enough that I'll have Oh, it fun. looks hilarious. Oh, my God. Anyways, uh, Belle. Yeah, Belle. This is an anime movie. Yeah, this is... Uh... This is by... The same guy who did uh Is it Summer Wars? No. Yes. Yeah? I I um The Girl Who Left Through Time, which is a hundred percent the guy who did Summer Wars. It was definitely the Wolf guy Children. who did Wolf Children. Yes, yes. That was the movie. I was thinking Dog Mom <laughs> Lady Man. Wolf this is the same Wolf Children guy, yeah. yes. Uh this looks very pretty. It looks it looks like something I should watch. It looks yeah. very, very pretty. It's all like but it's like all sci fi yeah, stuff. I, I like, like it. Yeah, I'm tired of sci fi. Uh, but I'll, what I'll, matrix guy <laughs> yeah i know but uh you know um look i'd see this normally but in a very bare that's a, january mm -hmm. like it is i will definitely want i know they're playing it out. at alamo i've Ooh, been seeing are. i've been seeing it on the app every Me too. When, I, so I'm like, when i keep logging really, on to be like what am i watching today <laughs> yeah and it also feels like they usually don't have the anime movies for a lot of showings but since there's not a lot mm, they're showing yeah. it a lot <laughs> Cool. So I might if if there's like a less packed, I'll probably go watch yeah, it. Check it out. It looks pretty. Uh, scream, five cream. <laughs> uh, uh, five creams, baby. <laughs> we were watching Scream. It, it was almost over. I don't know why it stopped playing. It That's was almost, very weird. It was almost over. Excuse me. I, I had Matthew Lillard was like, I think you stabbed me too much, man. <laughs> <laughs> Zoinks. Yeah. Uh, here we go. Oh yeah, that is where they were at. Yep, yep, yeah. No, no. Um. I, I really like the Scream movies. I have a lot of nostalgia with them because they were like... When I was a kid, they, these were the horror movies I probably rewatched the most just because like... I've only seen the sequels once. Just because like I could handle them better. Because like, yeah, when, you're a kid, when you're a kid, like, you know, you want to watch like the crazy horror movies, but you're a kid and you can't. These are just tame enough where like I could I could watch them and, you know, study are them. They even how I could be a psychopath. <laughs> Um, they even rated R. They are, yeah. Oh, okay. They are rated they're R. They're not that. They're not that hard. The, no, it's like language and like stabbing. They're not like <laughs> Halloween kills where it's like. Burr, burr, pull, <laughs> kid, it's just, it's mostly just like language and like stabbing. Yeah, they're they're fairly tame compared to the other things. But I I like the first one a lot. The second two are a little. Uh, the fourth one I like a lot of parts. I like of that it at the time. And whenever I rewatch it, I'm always like, oh, that ending's terrible. I don't remember it at all. Um, it was going for like a big reveal, like Emma Roberts was behind it the whole time. I remember that part. Um, and then it, they're like, she got away with it. And it's like, cool. But then the very last minute, it's like, no, she didn't. I don't remember and it's like, that. oh, I hate that. I don't remember like, it at they all. had a whole thing like, the bad guy got away with it. It's like, that's awesome. That's so cool. And then it's like, nope. <laughs> it was directed so, by Wes Craven. That yeah. was like his last last movie. Last movie yeah. yeah. Um, but this this next one, it's you know, it's I did not ten, know it was the ten years later. It's the Ray or Not guys who are very good, and they seem like the perfect people to be making another screen movie. And I'm interested. I've only <sighs> I've not yeah. seen a whole lot of it. I've I think they've only really shown the one trailer of like the opening yeah. scene. It's just so weird because um. Scream, it feels like Scream is a is a is a movie that is about tropes. Yeah, but we've been Scream Four is a movie that's very much like doing Scream One, but yes. different. And then there's Scream the TV show, oh. which is weird, <laughs> but it's but it's the bit. It's the like the first episode again, calling you on the phone. Yeah, <laughs> go, boo, boo, I'm watching. Uh, I'm using Snapchat. I'm now. watching Hostel <laughs> Baby or something. <laughs> um, that the Scream format, it just feels now like we've been here. Yeah, so what's much. what? Yeah, what do you what have to they... say? What are you gonna do with yes. this? Other than like, oh, security apps. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it's like. 
that, I that's know. why I'm interested in in like the in, I like stream in, 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 in what just... in what area they go into it. Um, but yeah, I I don't know. I I like all the actors. You know, Courtney Cox. Courtney uh, Cox is great. Uh, Nev Campbell's great. Nev Campbell's great. David Arquette. David Arquette's got a heart of gold. Yeah, and Man like, fears not does not fear death. Yeah, <laughs> and like they they are just such a a fun trio of people, and it's just nice whenever you know they all come back together. Um, so I'm I'm very interested in it. I'm hoping it'll be like all I'm right. I'm gonna watch it because I, I hope it's okay. Yeah, I yeah. can't confirm the 4K version looks a lot better. Just saying. Uh, over the peacock <laughs> version. Oh, the peacock <laughs> That's, That's crazy. crazy. It's shit on peacock. No, Karen, I added two movies to this <laughs> I list. did also notice this was coming. Yes. Up. Um, Hotel Transylvania 4 Transformania. On Amazon. This is Amazon Prime. Um, because it was originally supposed to go in theaters, but it was pushed back and then Amazon bought it. So now it's an Amazon exclusive. What I find most interesting about this movie is is Adam Sandler's was replaced. Whoa, really? Yeah. They replaced him with a voice actor. And, but like everyone else, like Selena Gomez, um, Andy Samberg, I think all of... The Happy, uh, uh, Happy Madison Happy crew? Madison crew are still there, but really? they just replaced Adam Sandler. Huh. And I couldn't find any like Reason. reasons for it other than like the one where it's like, they probably didn't want to pay him the money. because He's these, the most expensive out of everybody. Because he's the most expensive and these movies definitely do not make you know spider verse really? money i thought they did make a lot of money i think they make good movie but good enough money but i don't think it's clearly not enough to justify adam sandler adam sandler for the fourth time when he obviously would be asking for a lot more money with each film interesting so that is that is why i'm in, i will not be seeing this i've not mm. seen any of the other ones Neither but i just I. think that's very interesting, <laughs> that, interesting that this was marketed as like the adam sandler animated movie and now he's gone, but all of his <laughs> friends are still there. That's gonna be a weird party. They're gonna all go. All so go is to. that what the Transformia is a Transformania no. is about? That he transforms into to, to, to no, not Adam Sandler. There's a stupid like Ray, and it turns all the monsters into humans. And I thought the they already did the... that bit too. No, I guess this is this one. No. I don't know. Mm-hmm. So they have to go. I watched the trailer recently because I wanted to compare the voices and see if, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not Adam Sandler. It's a Dracula voice, but it's not Adam Sandler. <laughs> It's not, a, it's not a bad Dracula voice. No, that's a good Dracula voice. That's not what I'm saying. Wow. Like, whoa, 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 what a minute. <laughs> um, but yeah, then they had to like, go on adventure to like some place. And it's like, oh, if we don't do it by midnight, we're all going to be humans forever. It's it's stupid. It's, it sounds like an Amazon original movie. Yeah, all right. Um, and then I also add a, added a Euphoria Season 2. Yeah. I don't know. I, don't know I, I feel I'm like ready, I'll end up man. watching it. Eventually. Why are you just gonna be fucking miserable, bro? I will be, but at least <laughs> now it's just gonna be released weekly, and I don't they're think they're gonna be like all glittery, and it's gonna be this really beautiful dream life. So I was like, <laughs> yeah, and then there's gonna and be then like, Zendaya's gonna get fucking raped or something. There's gonna be a lot then, of romance. Zendaya has not been raped in the show, okay? Just, oh wow, just, just, she's, it's not happened. <laughs> Hunter but Schaefer this has many been. Days, she this, has been. This yeah. many days since a rape. <laughs> yes, Hunter Schaefer has been, and also like. Most of the cast. Most of the cast has it been feels like beaten or beaten something. Beaten or assaulted. Yeah. Everyone's like, well, a dream like music it's, it's, and like glittery makeup. Because like, like we all know. went to high school together, but I whenever I watch <laughs> movies and shows like this, it's like there's no way everyone's like getting it, beaten and raped all the time. It's like they time. made kids, but like the <laughs> TV show yeah. and now. That's a hundred percent what Euphoria is. That's a hundred percent what Euphoria. I'm I, not gonna watch Euphoria <laughs> then. <laughs> Thank you for letting me know. I, I, Zendaya is very good in it. Like I, she usually. Like I like I said. I, and, I'm and not going to show up to a thing for Zendaya. Hot yeah. take. And and Hunter Schaefer's a very good actor. I don't know um, she's a very cool uh, trans actor. Ah. Um, and and the show really explores like trans identity and. But again, I just it's just so miserable. But 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 yeah, it's so miserable because it's like <laughs> oh, I'm gay, it's... but my dad can't find out. And Benedict I'm gonna... Cumberbatch is like, here what? <laughs> yeah. <It's... laughs> that was a very weird episode. I didn't understand what was going and on. And the thing is, like, it's shot so fucking well, and it has oh, yeah. great monologues and great moments. But it's just in this like. But then, but then it's like mis- someone gives a good monologue. Then it's like, all right, now we're gonna fuck really like they found, hard and there's gonna be really weird close-ups on like my butt like they found like this weird thing of like i guess our generation because people love this show where it's like it needs to be relatable but it needs to be relatable to every 
horrible thing that happened to you or you heard happen to somebody you knew in high school. Yes. That, and it's like really like it's painted very vividly but also hazy. Like yeah. it's like they shoot it like the way somebody described this thing ha- and it's just it's just rough and it's It a, is it is rough. It's a bad it's But it's a bad good. Time. But it's it's rough. It's yeah, yeah I hate how I'll I don't know if it. I'm going to watch it cuz Donna Jo like at that point like she was all like, I fucking hate this. Like, it's, <laughs> and you're like, I, and I hated too. the ending. I fucking hated the ending also of the season one. It was way too, like, the whole song and dance. I oh, fucking yeah, hated no. it. They had, like, a musical number. George did not sign up from Zendaya <laughs> and the musical number at all, where she relapses. And then it's a whole thing. I don't oh, know. No. Anyways. Did you see the one, the movies? The, the I did watch the movies eventually. I like the Zendaya one a lot. Um, because that was just a conversation, and then the Hunter Schaefer one, I like most of it. I re, because she also like wrote part of it, which is like good, because like oh, finally the writer of this thing. Also, is, they really care about this show, but they really Zendaya care about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Um, and that had like a lot of like interesting topics, because like she talks about like being frustrated as a trans woman and being like, I want to go off my blockers, I think, and like that's that's very cool. I don't hear a lot of that because usually when trans people are in media their lives are either, like, miserable or, like, perfect. It's kind of hard. It's just good, but I don't know. And it's, and, but they, but when it's miserable, they don't explore, like, you know, that aspect of the misery. Like, the misery is, like, people hate me because I'm trans. Oh, yeah, But they don't get, like, an insider school. Yes. What's the specific misery? Yeah, like, what what are you, like, what is, like, actually difficult about it? Because I could not know because I am not trans. So, like, it's interesting, it was interesting, for that one, it was interesting to me to hear, like, her perspective on because it, it definitely came Does anything from... bad happen to her in it? No, it's okay. her that episode is her talking to a therapist and her like discussing like her issues with, you know her her frustrations with, you know, the transition and like her life right now. But then there's a lot of a, that like sex like cause she's like imagining like s- sex with like her like fictional boyfriend. Yeah. She has this thing where she's like really into older guys and she really likes them to like punish her punish her yeah it's it's weird it's very weird i don't but yeah there's the movie that film special thing is like 50 percent like cool introspective thing and then the other 50 percent of like yeah pounding (laughs) yeah just like rough pounding Mm. like like no like there's no way that feels good for either of you. They already you did were... that once, though. Yeah, and they did it again. Great. It's so oh. annoying. Anyway, this is not a movie, but it's a thing. <laughs> it's uh, a thing that George and I are very passionate about in a weird way. I like way. it. Also, it's been a long fucking time since yeah. they did season one. Because... 2009. Yeah, a pandemic happened, George. Yeah. It's it was horrible. like early 2019 also. Yeah. Because it was like right after Game of Thrones or something. Yeah. Um, Chernobyl's very good. I remember watching Chernobyl <laughs> and Euphoria seen, together. Not seen yeah, Chernobyl you thought it was yet. boring. I watched the first episode. Loser. <laughs> Come on, yeah, it's sorry. great. It's so I'm gonna try it again. There's it's some HBO so stuff I'm gonna try again. Check it out. It's great. I have a, uh, a Barry season three coming out soon. Oh, oh, I need to get back into Barry. 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 I like it a lot. Uh, Righteous Gemstones. I'm just thinking about shows that I have on HBO. Yeah, Righteous Gemstones was awesome. Walton Goggins, Brian. Peacock has a McGruber TV show now. Did you guys know about this? I did know about (laughs) this. It's a follow up to the movie, and it's so people love that movie, Ryan. I know Christopher Nolan loves that movie. People love McGruber. That's a fun fact, Carrie. Someone interviewed Christopher Nolan. Like, what movie? What's like a comedy movie you like? like? I really like this MacGruber movie. And he was genuine about it. <laughs> and how it was like a big bit that Christopher Nolan loves MacGruber, the movie. It's like that thing where uh, whenever you... Uh, there was a thing where if you ask Christian Bale what his favorite movie is, he says Beverly Hills Ninja, even though that's not true. It's just like I needed a movie that I could just answer. Like, yeah, the so first I one chose you thought of was... the Chris Farley film Beverly Hills Ninja. Oh, that's good. <laughs> Anyways, uh, clearly there's not a lot of movies coming on January. This is what we're talking Fuck about, you, folks. It's January. <laughs> Anyways, Carrie, if folks wanted to follow you, oh, real quick, um, Carrie, do you know where the Oscars are? Or are they kind of in limbo because of the pandemic? I don't know. I, think... I was gonna say we should be. Looking, looking at the best even, movies of yeah. the year soon, but I don't know when that is. Probably I, April. I think they were April last year. I think it's February because they were April last year because they had they didn't know what the fuck was going on. They didn't on. know what was yeah. going on, so they pushed it. But now the Grammys got canceled. 
So yeah, well, who, yeah, no one, I know, no I one know. is ever. Gonna I know, finish. but I'm just saying. Uh, I, this is saying March 27th. Okay. Oh, okay. According to Google. And then the Golden Globes are. Remember how great the Golden Globes they're are? They're not happening. Like they're not airing anywhere. I think. Is the really? really? I think that. No way them up and, <laughs> that's what I heard. I don't they know. Drop. That sounds familiar. <laughs> I think I saw somewhere that it was like we're doing them, but no one wanted them. <laughs> no one wants them. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, to say, folks, I was about to say that we're doing end of the year stuff, but not really. It's just been slow, so I've been watching a lot of our yeah. favorite, the best movies of the year. There's still a few that haven't come out yet what? that I... Wait a minute. The Golden Globes are Sunday. This Sunday? <laughs> That's what this says, <laughs> January 9th. <laughs> best folks, drama, motion picture, Dune, Belfast, The Power of the Dog, King Richard, Coda... Music or comedy, don't look up. Ticket, boom, liquor, pizza. Uh, Cyrano. Cyrano. Oh, what? See, that's what <laughs> I'm saying. Out. I want to see Cyrano so bad, but it's not. Golden Globes will yet. not be live streamed this weekend. What's the point? <laughs> oh my, this is so the weird. That the paper is. Uh, this what this I'm news dropped yesterday. <laughs> Actress in a musical or comedy, Emma Stone, Cruella, Marion Cotillard for Arnett, Alana Hammond nice. for Pizza, Jennifer Lawrence, Don't Look Up, Rachel Ziegler for West Side Story. Nice, she was awesome. Uh, anyways, I guess any more, go- Wait, wait, oh shit, I broke my hair, man. Uh, any more Annette nomination? Oh, um, let's see. <laughs> this action a drama, Jessica Chastain, has a Tammy Faye, Lady Gaga, House of Gucci. Yes. Oh, yeah! yeah. <laughs> oh, the Lost Daughter, I haven't seen The Lost Daughter. We need to watch the, I want to watch The Lost Daughter. With Olivia Coleman and Dakota. Oh, yeah, yeah I added that to my list. Uh, Kristen Stewart, Spencer, Nicole Kidman, being the Ricardos. Man, that movie looks fucking yeah, miserable. Looks <laughs> uh, said, actor in a uh, drama, Benedict Cumberbatch, The Power of the Dog, Mahershala Ali, Swan Song. Oh, yeah, Swan Song. Javier Bardem, being the Richards, Denzel Washington, The Tragedy of Macbeth, Will Smith, King Richard. Um, That's amazing. It'll be a private event that won't be aired on NBC due to controversy surrounding diversity issues involving the Hollywood oh, Foreign, Foreign Press, Press Administration. Yeah. The network announced. Interesting. Last year it was announced that... Also, the- according to MS- Peacock, oh. they only have Jigsaw. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why they have the little guy. Uh, it was announced last year that of the 87 journalists of the HFPA, none of them were black. Yeah. 87 people and not one black yeah, person. Yikes. That is interesting. Yeah, well, didn't they have a whole... We watched them last year. Didn't they have a whole thing where they came out on stage holding the fucking paper be like, we are here to take ourselves accountable or something. And then they did it. And then they did it. it. So what then the they hell? got to pull the plug. What the that fuck? That is so funny. Anyways, we need to end the podcast. Yeah, we do. <laughs> Ryan, where can people find you? Uh, letterboxed. Film piece. Um, I just updated my favorite films of all time. 70. Very wow. difficult to... <laughs> That's hard. Very difficult. It's been a challenge. I'm going to work on that for like two days. I was thinking of doing a thing where I was going to do my favorite movie for each year. I was a lot. I've done I've that I've done too. that. It's yeah, fun. It's fun. Okay. I need yeah. to do a new also one also seems those. very hard. I don't know how. I feel yeah, like I need I to have re- two monitors. I need, I need to redo mine too. But yeah, I, I redid I redid my favorite movies and I, added a few more. So it's 70. I'm seeing how many favorite movies I have. I have 126 you have a, movies. You have a lot more. <laughs> Carrie, where can people find that? I think I already asked you this. Uh, you did, but... But then you remembered something. I did. Sorry. <laughs> but it's okay. But uh, you can find me on Letterbox just by searching my first name, Carrie, K A R R I E. Or you can find me on Twitter what at K A R underscore E Lyles, L Y L E S. What is this? I feel like I keep seeing Perez Hilton. <laughs> I, I watched. We, on Peacock, there's a trailer for a movie called Most Likely to Die, and I 100% watched this oh! with our friend Alex before. Um, it's like a serial killer comes uh, back. You can find me at jcruzalvarez26, <laughs> where you can, uh, I don't know, see my ranking of The Matrix. I don't fucking nice. know. I think The Matrix Revolutions is better than Re- than Resurrections, maybe. Um, anyways, that's a podcast. I don't know what the fuck we're talking about. January, I just realized. <laughs> uh, we might we might have a we might have a fun. Maybe year. we'll skip January and do January and February. I don't know. Oh, and then ne- the next month do we that. do the best of the year. Because if nothing's coming that. out, then COVID. I don't fucking or know. Or we could do like old movies or something like we'll we're see. doing we'll figure it things out things are weird now I'm again. just trying to figure out where my hairband went yeah I saw that fly somewhere anyways <laughs> <to space>. until <laughs> next time bye bye <laughs> <laughs>